Time to forget I have assignments due. Pog champ. Yeah. 
Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. How's everyone doing? I hope you're well and uh, feeling suitably recovered after Saturday's excitement. Joe, thank you very much for the 13-month resubscription. Time to forget you have assignments due. Well, consider this your reminder you have assignments due and you can carry on with them around about half past ten when game night is over. Uh, lovely to have you all here. Hope you're keeping well and have had a, a good start of the week. Yeah, the washing machine is back, except it's a vacuum cleaner, which is making Dexter bark. Bork? Burke? So I say Burke? I meant to say Bork and Bark at the same time, and it came out Burke. Yeah, so that's the thing that's happening. Um, first of all, because um, I've not done it publicly on stream yet, thank you so much to everybody who turned out on Saturday. I had an amazing day, um, and we raised just over £1,650 for Fetch Dog, which is a remarkable achievement. So uh, thank you uh, very much to everybody who... Uh, who turned it up, who played, who donated, everyone who wrote question packs, everyone who proved to all the moderators for being there on the day. Thank you all. You're absolutely amazing. And it was a uh, tremendously fun day. Um, and uh, I hope you had a good time as well. Uh, particular, uh, <coughs> Don't die, Ben. Particular thanks to um, everyone who stuck with me right till the bitter end. It was about 2.30 a.m. when we uh, we finally wrapped it up after uh, Danger Zone 2. Um, so it was... Uh, it was a long old stream, um, but uh, worthwhile. I did some, just out of idle curiosity, I did some research into the uh, the sort of charities equivalent of Company's House, uh, just to figure out, because just to figure out sort of what sort of a difference we'd be making with um, the sort of the, the donations and the money that we raised. Um, I, I got a bit curious because uh, obviously Fetch Dog is not a particularly big charity, but um, when I looked it up, their, their turnover was like really not massive. Um, to the point where the money that we raised on Saturday uh, accounts for about 1% of their, well, certainly based on a uh, year or two ago's tax returns, accounts for about 1% of their annual turnover. Um, so it's um, just astonishing. And that is really going to make a really, really big difference to, a, to a, a small charity who do some really, really great work. So thank you very much uh, to everybody who contributed to that in whatever way it was. Uh, what's that vacuum emote? We, uh, vacuum emote when <laughs> we can get a vacuum emote. Well, you'll have to take it up with, uh, I think it's Shapes and Innis who uh, have got, uh, was it Shapes and Innis? A couple of people um, got um, emotes. Was it Shapes and Innis? Yes, it was. Shapes and Innis get to pick an emote. So uh, have a chat with them, see what they say. Let's stop that bonus right there. 27 people claim we can 10 pennies each. Ah, the message from our sponsor, Jerzo1. Thanks you, Ben, for all the nice quiz streams. Even if I need to endure the piano from time to time. What do you mean endure? Surely a pleasure to hear the piano. Uh, Jerzo, thank you very much for the five-month subscription and your kind words. Um, yeah, so... It's Piano is still here. I don't know if we're getting a piano tax uh, tonight <laughs> from uh, our friend Zeus, who uh, topped up quite the bill. Uh, ben, better piano? Yeah, something like that. Um, anyway, let me say good evening to you all. Hello to Colo, to Aaron, Topper, Oni, Zeus, Shapes. Good evening, Samster in it. Solly, Abin, and Mark. Hello to Derek and Quizface and Jack and Energia, Lupine and Natter, Toot and Joe, Cyberspace, Johnny Chum. Good evening to Cetra and Jers and Innis and Mork and Planet. A couple of new people who joining us, joined us on Saturday, joining us back. It's lovely to have you back. Welcome to you too. Pyro and Reese Wynn, Lewis and its Sportsy, Goldfish, Vision, Quizzle, Yellowtail, and anyone else who's lurking and loitering and lingering in the chat. You're most welcome to be here. Thank you so much for joining me on this Tuesday evening where it's chill night chill night couple of chill games of red herrings um, I've uh, thrown together a plinko the quiz to do in between and then we've got danger zone 2 to wrap up the night so it's not entirely chill we've got some chill red herrings danger zone 2 is a little bit more intense but um, 
Yeah, it uh, should be a fun night. And we are starting off with pack one of two Red Herrings packs. This has been written by a Pono Nuevo, to whom we're very, very grateful. Uh, lovely little pack, and thank you very much to Oni, I think it was, who proofed this one. Uh, so, uh, lovely stuff. I actually with wine. I've got a glass of red wine on the go, which is very nice. Mm. So, if you want to play a Pono Nuevo's Red Herrings pack, all you need to do is type in this here code. I have moved some sound buttons onto my uh, stream deck. I want to get some more, some more sound buttons I want. Uh, let me see if I can find one of the ones I need to transfer over. Um, uh, let's see if I can get this one. Ah, G. Eisen's Halo, welcome to the stream. Great to have you with us. Um, Order! Order! I need to get one of those. <laughs> I would quite like one of them. Yes, yeah, so we'd have Honk as the lobby code. Pain. Of course, I've got Pain on here now as well. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We're suddenly playing Katane. Does Katane have... No, Pain. pain. Not Katane. Order! Oh, that's a good one. Order! <laughs> Order! Pain. I'm just making noises now. Order! But that's enough order for now. I'll get it onto the stream deck and that'll be, that'll be great. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, 7 point 20, 20, 29 players in Slave which is great. Can we make it a nice round 30? We're in for a couple more. Pain as quiz fails. Sample, there's nothing but Burko. I, you know what? I, I could get involved with that. I love a bit of Burko. Good old John Burko. Oh, has it got order, order? Oh, fair enough. I haven't played this in years, literal years. I'm not trying to, I'm just saying around it. I'm just lying to Sorry, you made me descend into my Boris Johnson impression there, Joey and Tom. I knew them. I was again very cross with Boris Johnson. Oh, hello, um, I.O. Benny. Welcome to the stream and welcome to uh, Game Night in general. First time chat here. Uh, nice to have you here. You are in the game. You're that little green um, avatar down there. Uh, for the um, rest of the game, um, uh, I.O. Benny and anyone else who hasn't played before, make sure you whisper your answers to Persephone's Twitch spot because anything you write in the public chat isn't going to get processed. So. Uh, That'd be a problem, and it's also going to get deleted by a moderator. So make sure you've got the bot right there. Click the bot's name, and then press uh, Whisper, and you'll be able to uh, whisper the answers to her, and she will process them. This game is all multiple choice, so it should be relatively easy. Exclamation mark Whisper, indeed. Yes. Uh. This one is in B-flat. Right! Let's lock this thing up and we'll get the first game underway. As a reminder, this is a pack written by Apodo Nuevo, uh, to whom we're very, very grateful. And um, let's see what you make of it. Let's go to round number one. Round one is book burnings. Yes, that's what we're going to be uh, celebrating here. Let me just very briefly explain the rules of round one. And I can see if I can do that simultaneously while I load up the pack for any notes that I might need to read to you. Uh, so, round one, very simple multiple choice. You've got to whisper A through P to Persephone's Twitch bot. If you get the answer right, you get one point. If you get the answer wrong, you lose one point. You can abstain. There is no penalty for abstaining, though, of course, you don't get any points if you abstain. There are 12 questions in the round. There'll be 16 answers around the grid. Um, none of the answers will be repeated. So once an answer is has been used, you can mentally check it off because it won't come up again. However, four of the answers will never be used. Uh, uh, did what now? Oh, you don't leave since Sunday. Um, four of the answers will never be used, and they are the red herrings that you want to avoid. Additionally, there are three bonus questions secreted into this round, and these are worth three points if you get them right, but they will cost you three points if you get them wrong. Okay, so that is the rules. That's how it is scored here. Um, hmm. So... Here are some notes from a Podo Noi. In fact, before I do that, let me reveal the answers. Here are the answers, first of all, on book burning. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Gulliver's Travels, The Da Vinci Code, 1984, Of Mice and Men, Brave New World, A Tale of Two Cities, Eat, Pray, Love, The Great Gatsby, And Then There Were None, The Hunger Games, Pride and Prejudice, To Kill a Mockingbird, The Crucible, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, and Atlas Shrugged. 
So here's a note from um, a Polo Nuevo for you. If you're expecting a round on Fahrenheit 451, you'll be disappointed. It's a different kind of burn. Each question in this round is a quote from an actual one-star review of a book on Amazon. Pick the book that each review is referring to. Spot on shapes, catty reviews. Now, because some of these questions are quite long, I have made um, a small change to the build and I put this onto music round mode, which basically means it extends the question. You're gonna get 30 seconds because there's quite a lot of text to parse. So I'm giving you an extra 15 seconds to answer them. Um, I've also put the extended sting of the question timer on here, which lasts almost 30 seconds, but is about a second short. So there will be a, um, it will be a slightly out. Uh, just at the end of the timer, just uh, in case that upsets you. But as always, the question will appear in the chat, and when the question appears in the chat, the question is live. Okay, we're going to do this, are we? Thank you, G-Eisons. Uh, when the question appears in the chat, the question is live, so make sure you whisper to Persephone's Twitch bot to get to answers processed. Score count, welcome to the stream. Am I going to do the whole book review like Professor Snape? I will try. Right, good luck. Have fun. Round one is book burnings. Let's play question number one. Also, Peter, the most ridiculous choice of name in a novel, with also a significant focus on food. So quite a long question, so you've got a little bit more time to get your answers in. You can go into minus points on this game, just bear that in mind, as, as it's being demonstrated here. <laughs> yes. So there's the 30 second timer stint. It was The Hunger Games. K The Hunger Games is what we're after there. Moving right along, I'll do one more in Alan Rickman's voice. The story was a bit far-fetched to even pretend it could have happened. I mean, who goes to a party after receiving an invitation by letter and not really knowing the correspondent? There you go, there's enough Alan Rickman for me. A lot of red going on here. Quite a few people have stayed, don't say I blame me on that one. And then there were none, was the answer. Jay, was that an Agatha Christie book? I think it was an Agatha Christie book. On we go. Oh, our first bonus question off the game. Three points if you get this right, but beware, minus three if you're wrong. Here we go. What's this review? What? No, don't get me out of range exception. What's that all about? Why are you giving me an out of range exception? Oh. Whoops. Why is that trying to play a music round clip? Where's that come from? So this is the new thing I added in earlier on. Um, it's a good start, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> why is that happening? 477. Is music round time really? Oh, of course. Yeah, there's... Um, Damn it. There's a different method for the bonus round. Yeah, basically it's a bonus question. Shit. There's a different method for the bonus question. Ah! Uh, which means I need to fix that. Um, I wonder what happens if I, un if I just press go now. Show bonus questions where we've gone to. It starts to play the co-routine. Uh, yeah, clock on isn't gonna, it's not gonna start the timer either. Uh, which means it's all going to not work from there. Oh! Pain. Yeah, sorry about that. So that's going to be, and I'm going to be frozen on camera now as well. That's going to be two free questions, so I'm going to have to restart the game and fix that very quickly. With apologies to Apolo Nuevo for upsetting your pack. Um, did it write this in the chat? It did write it in the chat. It wrote the question, but not the answer. Okay. So I'm going to have to stop the game um, because the time machine of this only picks up from the beginning of the round anyway. Um, so, well, well done to everyone who's got two points because you've won, but that's free two points for you. Uh, if you want to play with uh, integrity later on, you could give the same answer you gave. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, just, it's my bad for not realising the bonus round has a different method. Um, so, uh, is music round, time remaining equals 30. Let's just copy that into there. Uh, so I can play with delayed. Uh, can I use a track? I think that's right. Play music track in 30 seconds. Yep. So 
that was literally it. And it's only affecting him round one anyway, so uh, apologies for that. That's my bad, that is an oversight. Let's try that again. Roll credits! Roll titles! Here, have some whoops, pennies. This is what happens when I make changes to a game and don't fully test it. My sincere apologies for that's entirely my fault. Hello, 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 hello! And let's go again. WRWY, we had about 32, so we'll wait till we've got about that and then we will uh, jump right back in. Everyone back who wanted to be, 7.20, 20, 20, 29, 30, right there, a couple more. Yeah, don't worry, be happy, that's my motto for tonight. Oh, welcome back, Samson. There we go. Right, uh, 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop the bonus. And... Let's go. Still got burnings. Questions will be in a different order. Rules are the same. And the answers are in a different order as well. Line the Witch of the Water about to shred the Great Gatsby of Mice and then Brave New World, Da Vinci Code, 1984, Replay, Love, The Events of Tom Sawyer, The Hunger Game, Gulliver's Travels, and then there were none. Taylor Two Cities, The Crucible, Pride and Prejudice, To Kill a Mockingbird. Those are the questions. Let's see the answers, rather. Let's play. And hopefully it'll work this time. Fingers crossed. It's difficult to imagine that most women going through ugly, painful divorces have had the liberty and means to run off on an all-expenses-paid one-year sabbatical spanning three countries. It was a difficult storyline to relate to. What is this an unfriendly review of? And you do lose a point if you're wrong. people sitting out there. There we go. A lot of people going to Eat, pray, love was the answer there. H. Eat, pray, love. Number two. I read this prior to a trip to Europe and some of the sites mentioned in the novel. I wish I could wipe this shit novel from my memory so that I could have better enjoyed seeing the Louvre at Westminster Abbey without being reminded of that jackass Robert Langdon. It's F, the Da Vinci Code! Which the best thing about it was the invention of Cryptex. No, I can't find that. I quite enjoyed the Da Vinci Code, the book at any rate. Number three, I do not recommend this book unless you enjoy the mostly made-up adventures of young boys who enjoy playing with dead rats on strings. This probably won't be a very helpful review, will it? What's this a review of? <laughs> That's what happens when you get a restart, G.R. Because, yeah, it does, do a, it does a bit of a cabinet reshuffle. Oh, it's a sneaking answer in, in the nick of time there. Yes, I, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Adventures of Tom Sawyer is what we're after by Mr. Twain, I believe. The first paragraph was cool and did not get much farther. If you like unintelligible prose, go for it. What could this be? I mean, maybe that one? If I was going to, I would probably have seen on this one personally because I don't know. I think it's probably B, and I'd be wrong. <laughs> oh, it's a tale of two cities, M, the tale of two cities. The best of times, it was the best of times, you stupid monkey. On to the characters. I found them all terrible. I hated John and was dissatisfied when the novel turns to focus on him. Bernard, Lenina and all the others were unremarkable. It's got John Bernard and Lenina in it. <laughs> it's the bluest of times. Do you think it was B as well, Luke? <laughs> 
It's Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. E is what we're after. Not a bonus question yet, so hopefully when it appears in a minute, it will work. That was it. I couldn't identify with any of the characters and I found Lenny to be annoying. I couldn't feel sorry for him. I was actually cheering for the guys to catch him. I think I know this one. <laughs> Any more for any more. Maybe you lose a point if you're wrong. Can abstain. It was D of Mice and Men. Lenny is alive from not here. I fear not, Toot. Here we go. Here's a bonus question. Let's find out if it works. Fingers crossed. Ping. There we go. I really wasn't expecting this children's book to go right to drug addiction in the fourth chapter. Turkish Delight was clearly an allusion to an addictive drug, and once Edmund ate some, he would do anything, including betraying his siblings, to get some more. It's a nice one for a bonus question. Oh, Cetra! Losing three points there. Yes, yeah, so remember you lose three if you're wrong on a bonus question. It does mean with the first bonus being question seven, the next two bonuses are going to be question nine and question eleven. It was A, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. On we go, question eight. Please stop making us, your students, read this. It is so dull and boring, I want to burn this book like it's a witch. Ten seconds, if you want to have a guess. No pressure, you don't have to. You do lose a point if you're wrong. And there's your time up. It is N, the Crucible. The Crucible, a bit of a hint there. Burn it like a witch. Bit of a cryptic clue. And the next bonus question. It is number nine. Take a look, three points if you're right. Minus three if you're wrong. The story was a bit far-fetched, so you can pretend it could have happened. I mean, who goes to a party after receiving an invitation by letter and not really knowing the correspondent? Oh, deja vu. This is a bonus question, so if you got this one wrong before, maybe just sit this one out rather than losing three points. I'll let you have that. Or you can take the free answer. That's also fine. <laughs> it was still, and then there were none. L is what we're after the Agatha Christie book there. So we go question number 10. Oh, and three of the main characters die in the end. Both the Wilsons and Redacted himself. I'd kind of compare this book to the Kardashians. The only thing I liked about this book is the way F. Scott Fitzgerald crafted it. I think it's C. Yes, it is. The Great Gatsby is the only one up there I know, just by F. Scott Fitzgerald. The Adequate Gatsby, yes. So we all that review would say, or the less than adequate Gatsby. Final bonus question then. Three if you're right, minus three if you're wrong. Take a look at this. Also, Peter, <laughs> again, the most ridiculous choice of name in a novel with also a significant focus on food. Well, Samster is 17 out of 17 so far and Toot as well, looking to get a bonus of two points if they can get a perfect round. Only one more answer to find. Can you remember? Uh, literature, yeah, that's a fair point. Fair point, Lupin. <laughs> well, it's still The Hunger Games. Jay, The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Suzanne Collins? I think it was Suzanne Collins. Last question of the round there. Luckily, while Winston is busy waxing on about how much smarter he is than everyone else, we get to meet such interesting characters as Julia, who fails to at any point describe one physical characteristic that she actually likes about him. I should have done these in my... Uh, <laughs> Luckily, while Winston is busy waxing on about how much smarter he is than everyone else, we get to meet such interesting characters as Julia, who fails to act as, to at any point describe one physical characteristic that she actually likes about him. It's G, it's 1984. Well done if you got that one. Red Herrings there were Alice Shrugged, Gulliver's Travels, Pride and Prejudice, and To Kill a Mockingbird, and that is the end of round one. 
Toot and Samsu cash in there. Two point bonus for a perfect round. Very well played. You up to 20 points. Quizzles on 17. Quiz faces on 16. Cycle space. Zeus and Mark all on 15. Nicely done. Well played, uh, my dudes and dudettes. Uh, let's go on to round number two. Ah, <laughs> round two is four greens, one grey. I wonder if you can think where this might be going. Four greens, one grey. In this round, this is the freeze-out round, the speed freeze-out round, okay? So, <clears throat> in this round, if you get it right within five seconds, you get three points. If you get it right in the next five seconds, you get two, and if you get it in the last five seconds, you get one. If you get it wrong, you don't lose any points, but you get frozen out of the next question, okay? You get frozen out of the question after. So you don't want to get frozen out because you won't be able to answer it. Um, and of course, you can be frozen out of a bonus question, and bonus questions in this round, again, there are three, are worth five points. They will never be consecutive, and they will never be first or last. Uh, but bonus questions are worth five points in this round. Flat rate, no time bonus for answering them faster on those three. But three, two, and one, depending how fast you answer for this. Um, yeah, that's about it. You get frozen out if you get a question wrong. So again, abstention could be a valid tactic. Um, with uh, Yes, and if you get a perfect round in this, if you get 12 out of 12 again, then we will give you a bonus. I think it's three points you get in this one. So four greens, one gray. Let's reveal the answers. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Isn't it frustrating when you're trying to guess a mystery five-letter word and you have four letters right, but there are too many options for the last one? In each question, you will see three clues to three different words that can be formed by filling in a different letter into the blank space of one of the incomplete words. Choose the incomplete word that can be used to fulfill all three clues and be aware that proper nouns may be used here. Yes, it is Red Herrings Does Wordle. And thank you to Apodo Nuevo for this lovely little round we've got going on here. I've explained the rules. Those are the answers, 12 questions, 12 correct answers for Red Herrings. Good luck, have fun. Round two is four greens, one gray. Here is question number one. Yeah, New York Times lawsuit coming in. To die out, a musical count to try to prevent all three clues. It's C, Peter, Meter, and Deter would have been the answers you wanted there. Orange, if you're frozen out, let's go on to the next one. One of the Beatles, an Australian mammal, an ITV game show inspired by the popular word game Wordle. Wait, what? It's G, Ringo Dingo Lingo. <laughs> Can't believe I just said that. Ringo Dingo Lingo, on we go. To be on top of, to be above the ground, one who travels. It is L, cover, hover, and rover were the answers there. Lots of abstentions, people not wanting to free themselves out. Number four, a colour, matured, and to submerge. And the faster you answer, the more points you get, but you don't want to get frozen out. It's got to fulfil all three clues. It was M, brown, grown, and drown were the answers there. A few players frozen out. As we get to... Oh, bad luck if you're frozen out. It's the first bonus question of the round. Five points flat rate if you give me a right answer to this. To say hello, a vice, and a language. It was B, that's greet, greed, and Greek. Well played. Onwards. Number six, a large mammal, a small mammal, and a code. It's N for a moose, a mouse, and morse. Moose, mouse, morse. Just it's slightly frozen out of this next one. Oh, and bad luck, Liam, it is another bonus question. Five points flat rate if you give me a right answer to this. Country, a bell, and to scold. 
the mouse gun, can it? Well done if you got the little P, a chile, a chime, and chide. Nice, nice, nice. Question eight, a wine to turn and one who flies. It was D, Pino, pivot, and pilot. Pino, pivot, pilot. Onwards and forwards, number nine. And Herb, a musical count, and simple. Where are we after? K for Basil, Basie, and Basic. Or Basil, if you're American. Number 10, to embark upon one of the Beatles and Simple. Hang on, I'm getting a deja vu, but it's not the same question. Or is it? Uh, o for Start, Star, and Stark. Ha! Ah, I now get it for why some people are getting these wrong. Because there's multiple. I did proof this pack, so um, I, I've only seen these for the first time. Bonus question, five points for this. To lead into sin, a musical count, and short-term workers. It's got to fulfil all three. Bad luck, Zeus. Getting frozen out of this one. It was I, tempt, tempo, and temps is what we wanted there. Question 11. No, 12. The last one. To embark upon, to throw, and to interlace. It was E, leave, heave, weave. And the red herrings, A, F, H, and J. And that is the end of round number two. No bonuses going out that time. But some big scores being amassed. Samster hanging on to the lead on 48. Toots in second on 47. Mark there in third on 44. Quizface has got 41. Cycle Space and Quizzle on 39. And Dogfish Jers and probably Halo, I think, on 37. Oh, what a lovely round. Really clever round. Really, really clever round. In fact, I think in Oni's notes, he said, um, round two is wonderful and I'm uh, annoyed I didn't come up with it myself. <laughs> hey, Sailor, welcome to the stream. Don't worry, we've got another game of Red Herrings coming up in a little while, so do sit tight. Uh, welcome on in. Hope you're keeping well. Um, yeah, another Red Herrings game after this. Right, on we go to round number three. Round three is called What's the Deal? This is the accumulator round. You'll notice there are only 12 answers rather than 16. There are only nine questions to go with them, so three red herrings this time. Uh, in this round, it's an accumulator round, so the first one you get right is worth one point, the next one is worth two, the next one is worth three, and so on, and so on, and so on. If you get one wrong, you break your streak, and you have to start building up again from one. If you abstain, it preserves your streak, and though you don't get any points for the question you abstained on, it will preserve your streak, so you go one, two, three, break, the next one you get right will be worth four. Okay? Uh, so that's something you want to think about. This one, this round, um, is slightly niche. It is a little bit niche, but there are clues built into the clues, or clues built into the questions, which should edge you towards the answers, uh, even if uh, you're not quite as au fait on the area. But it is a little bit niche. We'll see how we get on. If you do manage to get a perfect game and get nine out of nine, we'll give you a bonus five points at the end of this round. So let's reveal the answers first of all. Libertalia, Race for the Galaxy, Flux. Welcome to Eucra. Dominion, Catan, Cribbage, Hearts, Seven Wonders, Hanabi, and Terraforming Mars. In this round, you'll see a description for how cards are to be dealt or acquired at the start of a game. Match the description to the game. <laughs> Sam's just saying, ugh, board games. You have money box all over again. Yeah, it is a little bit, isn't it? A little bit of money box. There was some, uh, some board games. That also written by a poet in a way, that has to be said. Uh, but in this one, we are steering well into the board games. Uh, like I say, there should be some clues built in. It is a little bit niche, but we'll see how we get on. Good luck. Have fun. Round three is what's the deal? Is question number one. After receiving your corporation card, pay three mega credits for each project card you keep. Remember when you're blue, you might as well attempt a question. L, terraforming Mars. 
because yes, there's no streak to break if you're on zero, so you might as well have a guess. Deal three cards to each player, draw one card and play one card unless the rules say otherwise. It's C Flux with two X's apparently. So purple if you're on a streak, blue if you're not. Number three, deal six cards to each player, of which you must discard two unless your starting world is Ancient Race. Some tactical abstentions going on here, don't blame me, it's B Race for the Galaxy. Race for the Galaxy is what we're after there. Moving on, number four. Each player gets seven copper cards and three estate cards for their starting deck. It's F Dominion. Dominion is what we're on. So I'm keeping an eye on the statistics this round uh, to see how, we, how this pack plays out. Number five, flip the top card of each pile to reveal three pairs of house numbers and effects. It's D, welcome to a game where you're building a neighborhood of streets. I've just got to the trivia uh, for this one. So let's go on, number six. Deal the entire deck equally among all the players. It's I, hearts. I played, a, played this all the time on old PCs growing up, but no one seems to remember. I do, I love hearts. Great game, not as good as Whist. Number seven, deal four or five cards, depending on the number of players, and hold your cards facing away from you. It is K Hanabi, a game where you're not allowed to see your own cards, but must play them based on the clues your teammates give you. Two more, number eight, take resource cards matching the tiles you place your second settlement next to. It is G. Katan, settlement resources and tiles being hinted. Is there one more question? I think there's one more. Deal six cards to each player, then each player puts two cards in a pile to be scored by the dealer later. Might as well attempt this one, it's the last question of the round. It is H. Cribbage, and the pile is called the Crib. And the red herrings there, Libertalia, Euchre, and Seven Wonders, and that is the end of round three. No bonuses going out in that round, but we did have nearly 50% answer of questions answered correctly, 26% abstained, and 26% incorrect. So that's that's not too bad. That's actually a pretty good statistical, as I said, a hard round, but statistically that's uh, not too bad. Uh, so at the end of round three, Cycle Space has the lead with 75. Quiz Space is a very nice 69. And Toot is in third with 62, Marks on 54, Lupine 53, Shapes 52, and Energia, Innis, and Samsa all tied up on 50. But all of that could change as we go to the final round. <music> round four, the final round, we put the fun in fundamentals. Um, in this round, you will see 16 answers, and you need to find the six answers that fit the category that will be displayed at the top. Six of them will fit, ten of them will be red herrings. Submit them as exactly one string um, without any spaces, for example A, B, C, D, E, F, two Persephone's Twitch spot, not in public chat, that's just an example for you, without spaces <coughs> and without uh, separated characters. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yes, uh, and no repeated characters and nothing outside the range of A to P, otherwise it will be marked as zero. You can have as many guesses as you like. If you don't find all six, you'll be frozen out for five seconds and the bot will ping you back to tell you how many you did get. So hopefully you can start to whittle it down and figure out. It won't tell you which ones exactly are right, but it will tell you how many of them are right. Um, and uh, yes, hopefully you can whittle it down from there. The answers will gradually disappear, thus making your options more limited, and it will hopefully become a bit clearer as to what the answers will be. The first one to solve and find all six will get 50 points. Second gets 45, third gets 40, and 35, and 30, and so on. We keep playing until either 10 players have solved, the last of whom will get five, or you run out of time, which will happen after 90 seconds. Oof, dinner. 
Bitterotter, welcome to the stream. Great to have you here. Uh, we're playing another game of Red Herrings in just a second, so um, do stick around. So, uh, that's the rules of the game. Whispering to the bot, six characters, no repeats, nothing outside the range of A to P, and um, 50 points if you're the first to solve. Final round, we put the fun in fundamentals. Good luck, have fun. Options are... Mavis Beacon teaches history, Super Time Invaders, Rugrats the Great Milk Caper, the Yukon Trail, where in North Dakota is Carmen San Diego, Dr. Mario's Healthy Heroes, Donkey Kong Jr. Math, Mario teaches programming, Dr. Brain's Manic Mansion, Barney's Great American Adventure, Professor Pac-Man, Star Wars Math, Jabba's Game Galaxy, Connect Sesame Street TV, The Wiggles Wheel with Me, Counter with Kermit, Putt Putt Goes to Driving School, identified the six video and arcade games that were actually published. Right, 30 seconds in, Topper seems to be doing best, he's found four at the moment. There's a five from Lupine One. 60 seconds to go. I'm going to start eliminating answers. B is not an answer. Discount that from your thinking. Any more for any more. Let's eliminate another one. O. O is not an answer. Eliminate that from your thinking. Sam's still up to four now. Lupine's still stuck on five. Can you find any more? Let's eliminate another answer. I is not the answer either. Get rid of that. Jers is now up to five. Lupine's still stuck on five here. A few more fours cropping up. Let's get rid of another answer. It is not C. Eliminate C for your... Lupine has got it. Getting himself 50 points. Well played, Lupine. Still got 30 seconds. Just under 30 seconds. Coming up 20 seconds now. Let's eliminate another answer. It is not H. Get rid of H from your thinking. Last few seconds. Time for a couple more guesses if you're fast. Still seeing lots of fours. No fives yet. It's not J. Get rid of J from your thinking. Energy are now up to five. A, B, me now up to five. It is not F. Eliminate F from your thinking. Toot is up to five. Anyone else going to solve this? And it jerks herself for 45. Last five seconds. Another one has been eliminated. It's Sportsy getting 40 points. Jack getting 35. And you're out of time. Well done if you managed to solve that. I missed what the last eliminated answer was. The correct answers were D, the Yukon Trail, E, where in North Dakota is Carmen San Diego, G, Donkey Kong Jr. Math, K, Professor Pac-Man, L, Star Wars Math, Jabba's Game Galaxy, and M, Connect Sesame Street TV. Those were your correct answers. Uh, and uh, any trivia on those? Uh, the rest are all made up, though some may have had some tricky inspiration. The Castle of Dr. Brain uh, and The Lost Mind of Dr. Brain. This is from Alex now. The Lost Mind of Dr. Brain was brilliant and still holds up even today. Play it. I demand you to. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Alex and um, Apodo. So, at the end of all that, very exciting game. And that last round is particularly difficult to commentate on, I have to say. Um, points equal pennies in this game, so they will be added when the credits roll. But in third place with the bronze medal, it is Cycle Space. Picking up second with 86 is Jurors. I'm going to write these down uh, now before I forget. In fact, what are we playing? We're playing Red Herrings. Uh, Jurors picking up the silver medal. Cycle Space picking up the bronze but our gold medalist with 103 points. Many congratulations to the Lupine One. Well, well done, Lupine. Well done, Lupine. Gold medal for you is how many have you got a gold medal in Red Herrings before? Let's have a look at the leaderboard. Um, but, but, bye. Come on, maximize. There we go. Uh, Red Herrings. In fact, why don't I just look in your um. I can take a look in your metal cabinet, can't I? Uh, the lupine one. Ralph. Uh, let's see. Oh, you have. Yes, you've got two before. Two of each now. Two golds, two silvers, and two bronzes. So now that's three golds. Very well played. Uh, Cycle Space and Jurors. Let's see how you're getting on, how they're going to add to your metal cabinet. Uh, a bronze for Cycle Space. Four, so in fact, two bronzes. That's a third bronze for Cycle Space in Red Herrings. And Jurors. Let's just take a look in your metal cabinet. Uh, a risky business silver, so you've now got a red herring silver to go with that. Uh, very well done to you three, and thank you again to Opponent Nuevo for a lovely little question pack there. Oh, his medal cabinet, Aaron. Look in his medal cabinet. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Opono Nuevo, for that pack. Um, in, in absentia, yes, as Cola say, in absentia. Really enjoyable little pack there. Uh, so that's the first game of Red Herrings. I hope you enjoyed that. A nice a start to the stream. Another pack of Red Herrings coming up right after this break, and this one has been written by me and proved by Lewis this afternoon. So I uh, do hope that you'll stick around for that. Uh, I'm going to add those pennies to the database when the credits roll. It won't update until after I've run the next bonus because of weird uh, foibles with the app in that it writes the data, but the app doesn't re-pull in the data until I press the bonus button. I need to add a refresh button. Or make it pull in the data every time someone checks. But either way, uh, well played to Lupine. Back in a minute for even more red herrings.
We're back with the second game of Red Herrings. Not even an ad break there. I spoil you without your ads. Um, so, um, I don't you know, I I I I I was sort of saying the NHS. Um, let's get on with the second game. Time for the code! N-Y-N-E. New York, New Year. No, New York, New York, New Eve. New Year's Never Eve. I don't know. Prudes, welcome to the streamer, dude. Great to have you with us. Hope you're keeping well. And I'd say this pack has been written by me and proved by Lewis. Um, yeah, I think you'll have fun with this. <laughs> Particularly round two. I like round two. I like round two. The round two and round four, I'm very pleased with them. Uh, let's stop that bonus right there. Ah, Quinn West, a long time no see. How you doing? Welcome to the game. Yes, yeah, so I'll give you a quick rundown of the rules when we get started. The long and short, though, uh, Quinn is uh, whispier answers to Persephone's Twitch spot. Good to hear. Good to hear you're doing all right. Um, whispier answers to Persephone's Twitch spot, uh, and it's A through P for the majority of it. As to the rules themselves, I will explain uh, each round as we go, because each round is slightly different. But the concept is all the answers are given to you, and you've got, uh, then you're given a question one at a time, and you've got to fit the question with the answers. Um, various uh, little little uh, slight tweaks in between each one but yes um, and no, none of the answers will be repeated the answers will never be repeated no yield number exception there we go that'll do honk there's a goose and another goose I need two of them so I can sort of go like that and not break my stream deck Tom Allen's money bags what what did Lewis say? It's almost like you worked on a certain Tom Allen game. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, so Lewis has pointed out that um, something about um, one of the rounds has um, has uh, certain similarities with a, a, a Channel 4 game show I might have worked on. Ali Law, welcome to the stream. Hope you're keeping well. That's the end of the thing, right? 29 players in the game, let's lock it up! <coughs> Round one is called Happy Death Day. Just a quick recap of the rules for any new players joining us. Uh, you'll be shown 12 questions. You've got 16 answers around there. Four of those answers will never be used. Those are the red herrings. You want to avoid those at all costs. Um, yes, if you give me a right answer in this round, you get one point. If you give me a wrong answer in this round, you lose a point. There is no penalty for abstention, so if you don't know, you might want to leave it out. Though none of the answers will be repeated, so you can eliminate them as you go. Mentally check them off once they've been used. Though remember, there are four red herrings up there, which will never be the correct answers. Okay, so avoid those. And yeah, I'm keeping it nice and light here with the, the death day thing. Ha! Uh, so, uh, that's about all there is to it. Wispy answers to Persephone's Twitch spot. Keep your eye on the chat, because you've only got 15 seconds on this one when the question's in the chat. The question is live. Let's reveal the options. Abraham Lincoln, Margaret Thatcher, Nicholas Copernicus, Sir Edward Elgar, King Henry VIII, Sir Isaac Newton, Stanley Kubrick, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, William Shakespeare, Laurence Olivier, Oliver Cromwell, Mohandas K. Gandhi, Queen Victoria, Sir Francis Drake, Sergei Rachmaninoff, Pope Alexander VI. Who's changed that one? Did you change that one without telling me, Lewis? I didn't actually bother to double check. Lewis has changed one of my answers. Hello, Mrs. Flush. Hello. Look who's here. Come and say hi. Mrs. Flush is she's been released from from uh, <laughs> from 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 confinement. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Hi everyone. Hello. Oh, Hello, Danny Gambit. Welcome to the stream. Nice well. to see all of you. Thank you, everyone, for your nice messages as well. It was really, really helpful. I think, yeah, Ben will probably tell all of you, but I mostly just slept and I felt really crap for a few days. So. She just slept a lot. I was like, 18 hours. She like, became one of the cats. I did. I did. I did <laughs> become like one of the cats. And we just had to stroke her like this. Mm, really no, you nice. couldn't touch them. Oh, no, except, except like... You, you would come into the room and I'd have to, like, usher you out. To stroke you with, with one of these from a distance. <laughs> it was like that. <laughs> Stroking Mrs. Flush just feel better. This <laughs> is quite nice. Uh, for those of you who, who aren't in the loop, Mrs. Flush had COVID last week. So I, I had COVID. Uh, yeah, actual COVID. And yet Dylan and I didn't manage to avoid it entirely. Go figure. 
Yeah. Anyway, Mrs. Flush is much better now. Tested yes. negative the last so two days. So, pop um, in and say hi in between rounds. So, yeah. That's very nice of you. Nice to see mm, you. You too. Mwah. I've done a whole load of ironing. Ironing is pog. Ironing is good. Ironing is good. Yeah. Right. So this is Happy Death Day, and Lewis has changed one of my answers. Don't let me think that. Don't you think, Lewis, that when Mrs. Flush came in, that was a distraction from me? Yes. It was originally Rodrigo Borgia. Which I wanted. Looking forward to saying that. I was like, where is he? That changed to Pope Alexander VI. Who is Rodrigo Borgia? Anyway, round one, happy death day. Quite straightforward. You're going to be shown a date. And all you've got to do is tell me who died on that particular date. It will be one of these 16 people. Four of them will never be the right answer. Twelve of them, blah, 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 12 of them will be. So, there's a nice broad range. I didn't make them all 20th century. That would have been very, very mean. So, uh, see what you can do with this. Good luck. Have fun. Round one is happy death day. Here's question one. Yeah, maybe it's more of that. <laughs> 5th of December, 1791. I have 100% told you this before. 100% I have told you this before. It's H, Mozart, 1756 to 1791. Every time he's in a question, I will tell you that. That was the answer. Moving right along. Oh, it's a bonus question. Three points for this, but minus three if you are wrong. So, watch out. 18th of August, 1503. Wow. That was Rodrigo Borgia, Pope Alexander VI. A lot of people losing three points on that one. Never mind, moving on. 11th of July, 1989. Slightly more recently. Wow, Laurence Olivier was the answer. J, Laurence Olivier, 1989. Goodness me, there's more people on negative than positive. 31st of March, 1727. <coughs> Work it out. Roughly, when were they from? When were they from? Sir Isaac Newton was that one. 31st of March, 1727. Can I make this round harder, please? I could have made it harder, yet. Oh, another bonus question for you. Minus three if you're wrong here. I don't like seeing all these minuses. 7th of March, 1999. Come on. Three, three points for you. There we go. That's what we like to see. Oh, no, there's some reds as well. There is not a bonus for shooting the moon in this game, I will point out. Oh, Stanley Kubrick. Gee, Stanley Kubrick. Right, it's about half and half now. <laughs> On to the next. 15th of April, 1865. Number six. That was Abraham Lincoln. He was a president of the United States. On we go. Number seven, 30th of January, 1948. I think, if this is the one I think it is, this came up quite recently. Yes, it did. It was L. Mohandas K. Gandhi. Gandhi. Came up in 1948, yes. Oh, yes, it did in Spotlight. 3rd of September, 1658. A lot of red there. It was Oliver Cromwell. K. Letter number K. Thank you, Monty Python. Last bonus question of the round. Three points if you get this one right. Minus three if you're wrong. Have a look. 28th of January, 1596. That one was... Sir Francis Drake, N. Sir Francis Drake. I'm hoping most people have at least heard of these people. 23rd of April, 1616. We should be getting this one. For St. George's Day, it was William Shakespeare. He was also born on the 23rd of April, though not 1616. Top again, we're finally well played. <laughs> Quest 11, 28th of March, 
Yeah, that's fair energy. That's a fair comment. That one was Oh Sergei Rachmaninoff died in Beverly Hills, 28th of March, 1943. One more for you then. 22nd of January, 1901. <laughs> that was Queen Victoria. N is what we're after. The red herrings there. Uh, Margaret Thatcher, Nicholas Copernicus, Sir Edward Elgar, and King Henry VIII all on the top row. That's the end of round one. So he manages to pick up a two-point bonus. Well, that was harder than I thought it was going to be. I, <laughs> I thought maybe you'd, you'd be able to roughly work out when, what era they were in and then work it out from there. Um, there is something in the writing guide about multiple ways and draw question shapes. Yes, there is. Uh, the idea being, um, King Henry VIII is dead. Yes. Uh, yeah, so rough, rough maths, that was sort of my idea if you roughly what era they were from. Um, uh, Ali Law is just sort of shooting the room, sh shooting the moon there on minus 18. I did think your questions were tough, Natter. There's a difference, though, as we've discussed earlier on. I don't really want to discuss it publicly. I've made, made a point of not doing that. Um, so if you could not keep bringing it up, that would just be awesome. Um, Ali Law on minus 18. We've got quite a wide range of scores with uh, two out in front on 20 down to Ali Law on minus 18. OK, they get easier, I think. Round two is definitely easier. Round three is... Maybe easier. And uh, I, I, well, I, you, you decide. Round two. Ah, uh, multiple people from the same time period, yeah. Maybe I should have just done one from every year. Hello, David. Welcome to the stream. Great to have you. Uh, everyone is just complaining about how difficult the pack is, which is ironic in a way for reasons we're going to do. But if you look at the statistics, 38%, there were more people correct than incorrect and more people correct than abstain. Well done, Mark's got it. Yes, it is hidden in plain sight. Plain shittenite. Plain shittenite. Hidden in plain sight. Uh, in this round, it is the speed round. If you get the answer... Uh, <laughs> if you get the answer in the first five seconds, I'll give you three points. The next five seconds, two. The next five seconds, one. If you get it wrong, you're frozen out of the next question. Okay, frozen out of the next question, which means you won't be able to answer it. Uh, and bonus questions are worth five points in this round without the timer on. But you can be frozen out of a bonus question, and you can be frozen out on a bonus question. So do answer carefully, 16 answers, 12 questions, no repeats. Let's take a look at the answers. Ligaments, bowel, spatula, pajamas, telemarketer, swagger, whatever, riverbank, low life, progressive, ashamed, vagabond, mouth, jabberer, discotheque, and thuggery. And in this round, the clues are simple and the answers fairly obvious, but the answers have been hidden within other words. Identify the words that contain the hidden answer. And yes, there's more than a little quizness about this. So, identify the words that contain the hidden answers, is what you've got to do here. Uh, 8P is all you need. Round two, plain shit Good luck, have fun. Here's question one. A feeling of intense dislike. Whatever. Feeling of intense dislike is whatever. G. Which contains hate. Quiz face and that frozen out. Question two. Oh, it is a bonus question. Five points flat rate if you give me the right answer to this. Take a look. What Sherlock Holmes described as being a foot. He described ligaments as being a foot. Or the game. Ligaments is what we're after. Energy of frozen out of this one. Number three, a typically nocturnal bird. A typically nocturnal bird is a low life. I, where we get, where we, uh, I, yes, containing L. A fictional postman from the village of Greendale is number four. It's Postman Spatula. <laughs> Thank you, Shapes. Postman Spatula, which contains Pat, of course. 
Place on a spatula. Number five, a place designed for a baby to sleep. A baby is, of course, designed, designed to sleep in a discotheque where we get cot. Oh, is what we wanted. Proves you're frozen out thanks to that mistype. Noah built one of these to escape the flood. Is number six. Oh, bad luck, Jack. He, of course, built a telemarketer, as we all know. E. No, uh, built a telemarketer to escape the flood. We're an arc. Another bonus question. No one frozen out, which is nice to see. Five points if you give me a right answer to this. Something a dog might do with its tail. It might swagger. Dogs are going to swagger with its tail. F. Wag is what we're after, of course. Moving on. Number eight, to embrace somebody with affection. Is thuggery. To embrace someone with affection is thuggery. From where we get hug. P. You could do with a thuggery. Number nine, a fruity conserve that you might put in a sandwich. Back into positive foods. Very well played. Lovely stuff. Fruity conserve that you might put in a sandwich is, of course, pyjamas. Jam. D is what we're after. A few questions left. Here's number 10. How you might describe a man-eating giant. A man-eating giant could be described as progressive, I think, which has got ogre in it, J, a progressive man-eating giant. And the last bonus question of the round, five points flat for this one. Take a look. A weapon used to fire arrows. That's your bowels, of course. Your bowels are used to fire arrows. B for bowels, which has got bow in it, of course. <laughs> I thought so, Aaron, as well. Last question. An exterior lavatory. Blank house. An exterior lavatory is, of course, a mouth house. A mouth house. M for mouth house or out house. And the red herrings there. Riverbank ashamed, vagabond and jabberer. Ah, that is the end of round two. Oh, lots of bonus points there. Have I redeemed myself? 76% correct that time. Only 3% 3, 3 incorrect, 20% abstention. Yeah, I thought you might have mistaken bail for Al. That's why it was there. It was a red herring. Uh, I was a bit slower than you, it's still been negative. <laughs> well, you're back on to zero energy. Uh, yeah, lag on that one's a bit harsh. Yes, a little more fair. Thank you, Nata. Um, yes. Cool. So, uh, Ali, Laura, and Energy are on zero. Uh, Toot on 57. Samson on 48. Innis on 45. Everybody is back on positive scores, which is nice to see. Moving on to round number three. It's underground art, and this round is the accumulator round, so the first answer you give is worth one, the next answer is worth two, the next one's worth three, and so on. Uh, if you get a wrong answer, it breaks your streak and you have to start rebuilding from one. So if your uh, prefab is blue, then you might as well give me uh, an answer. If your prefab is blue, it means you're not on a streak and the next one will be worth one, so you might as well attempt it. Um, Yes, only 12 options in this round, nine answers, and if you can answer all nine correctly, then we will give you an extra five points, which means there's 50 points up for grabs in this round. Uh, let's take a look. The options for underground art are Bakerloo, Metropolitan, Victoria, Jubilee, Waterloo and City, Hammersmith and City, London Overground, Piccadilly, Northern District, Central and Circle. It's the sound of the underground. It is the sound of the underground indeed. And in this round, have I got some instructions here? Uh, in this round, match the colour of the line to the description given in the question. Yes, the sound of the underground. Underground art. Colour, art, underground, never mind. Round three is underground art. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Let's separate the people who live in London from those who don't. Good luck. Have fun. Here's question number one. Aerosmith's new obsession was the same colour as this line. Hammersmith and City is pink. You might know a couple of them, Quinn. You'll pick up a couple of them, I'm sure. Number two, and the colour of Twitch's logo is the same as this line, albeit a slightly different shade. Getting the hard ones out of the way at the beginning. B Metropolitan line is slightly purple. The London Underground map is so iconic, I thought everyone had posters of it. <laughs> Dogfish. Krista Berg sang about a lady wearing this line's colour. There we go, there's a few more. Central, the central line is red. On to the next. This line is the same colour as the ball worth four points in snooker. It's the Bakerloo line, which is brown. Onwards. Number five, the cover your skin goes with severe jaundice is the same as this line. And it's the circle line, which is yellow. L is the one that we got. There you go, you got one energy, you see? And then second at the Olympics, your medal will be the same colour as this line. It's the Jubilee line, which is silver, silvery grey. D is what we wanted there. Onwards. The Muppets Oscar the Grouch is the same colour as this line. It is the colour you're wanting to turn. It is green and it is the district line. The district line is green J. Two more. Hopefully you've been eliminating some along the way. Eight. On a standard Rubik's Cube, the colour of this line can be found opposite red. This one's hard, to be fair. <laughs> it's G. It's the London Overground line, which is orange or orange with a white bar in the middle. And orange is opposite red. Last one of the round. The mineral onyx is principally the same colour as this line. It's black and it's the northern line. I is what we were after there. And the red herrings there. Victoria, Waterloo and City and Piccadilly, which are all different shades of blue. That's the end of round three. So, at the end of that round, Toot has the lead with 85, Zeus has got 68 in second, and Shapes is in third with 68. My chat with Bot is a mood. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I figured everyone has at least seen the London Underground map, even if you can't remember the colours, but you might remember the circle line is yellow, the northern line is black, so uh, there we go. Um, bit of a disparity in scores, but there's one more round which could make all the difference. 36% uh, correct there, 42% incorrect. A lot more people attempting that one because there's no penalty for wrong other than just a break of streak. And if you haven't got a streak, then yeah. Um, overall, 50% of answers were correct, so that's okay. Free Ruckers, welcome to the stream. Great to have you with us. Uh, let's go to the final round. The final round is a friendly tragedy. And in this round, you've got to submit exactly six characters from A through P. No repeated characters, nothing outside of that range, otherwise be marked as zero. You can have as many guesses as you like in this round. Uh, uh, if you're wrong, the bot will ping you back and tell you how many you got right, which you can use to eliminate the answers and try and figure out the correct answers from there. Answers will gradually be removed from the board, thus making it a little easier. Just like this quiz. Yes, a friendly tragedy. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> it's very nice of you to say. Um, so, oh, hello. 
Eons of Lan! Eons of Lan. Thank you very much for that follow. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're keeping well. Uh, do stick around. We've got Plinko the Quiz coming up in just a few minutes. And then a bit later on, we've got Danger Zone, as written by uh, Lupine. So do stick around for that. Uh, so exactly six characters whispered to the bot. Uh, no spaces, commas, or separators of any kind. Uh, but Ian, I oh, sorry, Ian's of Ian. I thought it said Ian's of Lan. I've just seen that it's an I rather than an L. Ian's of Ian. Yes, not Flan. <laughs> I thought it was an L rather than an I, but yes. We'll call you Ian's of, Eons of Flan. But no, Ian's of Ian. Welcome to the stream. Great to have you here. So a friendly tragedy. The instructions will be shown at the top for what you need. Good luck. Have fun. 50 points if you're the first to solve, 45 for the next, then 40. We'll keep going until either 90 seconds are up or 10 people have solved, the last of whom will get five. Oh, thank you very much, Ian. I, I tell you what, I've literally put those YouTube videos up today, so it's, that seems to be working to bring new people in. Welcome to the stream. Uh, you'll have a great time here, so uh, do, uh, do stick around. My cunning plan is working. Wonderful. Right, good luck. Have fun. A friendly tragedy. Options are... The one with the unpleasant pie, the one with the communion wine, the one where the men dress as muscovites, the one with the massive storm, the one where Wolsey plays both sides, the one with the Starcross lovers, the one where the messenger was late, the one with the sea section, the one with the grave diggers, the one with the horse bargain, the one with the cross guarded yellow stockings, the one with the powder flesh, the one with the bear, the one with the disgruntled monk, the one with the handkerchief, the one with the ghost of Jupiter. Identify the Shakespearean tragedies from their friends style titles. Right. How are we doing? Rap card, thank you, Lewis. Lots of people getting four so far. No one getting a five. It's not L. Discount L from your thoughts. It is not going to be L. Still a couple of fours in here. Inca's now got five. Inca looking to steal here at this point. Plenty of fours. Toots now up to five. Energy has found five. AB Me's up to five. 40 seconds. It's not B, it's not D, it's not L. You can eliminate them from your thought. Mark at five, Shapes at five, AB Me, Innis, all at five. Prug's now at five as well. 30 seconds to go, it's not E. There's the first solve, Innis finding six, getting 50 points, nicely done. And another one, AB Me getting all six, getting 45 points. It's not P, eliminate P from your thoughts, 20 seconds. Time for a couple more guesses if you're fast. It's Solly's up to five, Samson's up to five, Cycle Space up to five, there's another one. Jack's found all six, getting himself 40 points. Any more for any more. Last 10 seconds. Loads of fives up here. There's another one. Zeus has got 35 points. Finding all six. Last couple of seconds. Anyone else going to solve it? Proves of the 11th hour managing to get 30 points. And that's the end of the round. Let's check out the answers. A, F, G, H, I and O were the answers. A. So let's just go through these. A, the one with the unpleasant pie. That was Titus Andronicus. The, and then E, uh, sorry, F, the one with the star-crossed lovers. That was Romeo and Juliet. The one where the messenger was late. G, that was King Lear. Um, the one with the C section. H, that was Macbeth, or the Scottish play, if you're superstitious. Uh, I, the one with the grave diggers. That was Hamlet. And O, the one with the handkerchief was Othello. Fellow. The other answers there, uh, the comedies, the one with the cross guarded yellow stockings was Twelfth Night, uh, the one with the men dressed as Muscovites was Love's Labour's Lost, the one with the pound of flesh was the Merchant of Venice, and the one with the communion wine was the Taming of the Shrew. The histories, uh, the one with the horse bargain was of course Richard III, the one where Wolsey plays both sides was Henry VIII, and the one with the disgruntled monk, a bit of an obscure one there, was King John. And the romances, or the problem plays, the one with the massive storm was the Tempest, the one with the bear was of course the Winter's Tale, and the one with the ghost of Jupiter, one of the lesser known ones, was Cymbeline. So, uh, only six tragedies up there, the rest were either histories, romances, or comedies. Uh, and at the end of all that, my, 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 my. Despite all the complaints about round one and arguably round three, uh, I hope you had fun with that all the same. Third place, and I'm going to add these to the board before I forget them, getting the bronze medal this time is AB Me. Picking up the silver medal with 98, it is Innis. But our gold medalist, coming from seemingly nowhere, picking up the gold medal with 103 points, our winner is Zeusless. Press the button, press the button, press the button. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, the London round maybe helped us with a big, uh, bit of a bit of a London boy there. Very well played, and um, uh, points equals pennies, of course. Um, so I'm just going to give myself some uh, pennies as well as the author there. Uh, Zeus, innocent, AB, me, lovely stuff. Let's award your medals. There you go, and uh, and your pennies for everyone else. Points equals pennies, and they will be added on uh, when the credits roll, and then I'll give you another bonus. So hope you had fun with that. It was something I whipped up, uh, whipped, whipped up this afternoon. So, um, yes, that was uh, red herrings. And yeah, round one, maybe a little difficult, maybe a little difficult. But uh, 
Time to look as a baked potato has just been cooked sounds good Salem. Well, um, I'm going to go for a very short break now, but don't you worry because I'm going to leave you in the very capable hands of Plinko the Quiz because uh, this seemed to go down go down a, a treat at the, uh, the charity stream on Saturday. Uh, so if you want to play Plinko the Quiz, do stick around. Full answers will be required for this one, of course. Um, but uh, some extra pennies up for grabs if you would like them in uh, in place of uh, a bonus. Well, I might give you a bonus anyway. Uh, and then after the break of Plinko the Quiz, we will be back with Danger Zone 2 as written by Lupine. I do hope you can join me for that. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, Plinko coming right up. Congratulations to Zeus and uh, see you in a few minutes' time. And welcome, David J. Bodicum, to the stream. Great to have you here, as always. Hope you're keeping well. And uh, yes, the uh, the corrections that were made to Plinko are basically all David J. Bodicum's ideas. So uh, uh, if you like what you're seeing here in Plinko the Quiz, uh, bonus now available, uh, by the way. And uh, Kevin Coach, welcome to the stream as well. Great to have you. Um, so if you like what you see here, you've got David to thank. I just knocked it together. I basically made a game that wasn't very good. Um, but then David said, why don't you try this? And suddenly it was good, which was nice. Um, so let me move those into the news folder. Uh, yeah, so Plinko the Quiz coming up. I'll do a very short ad break. Um, and um, yes, BC, hello. Welcome to the stream. Great to have you. And uh, yeah, Plinko and then Danger Zone a bit later on. I'll shut up for now. See you in a few minutes. So also, welcome to the stream as well. I'm going to get a glass of wine. When I come back, I will lock this lobby and stop the bonus, and then we'll play Plinko. Okay, are you ready to play Plinko? I might do some odd commentary on the way through. In fact, I might even put it on game with Cam in case I want to show myself. Oh, but if I'm going to do that, I need to turn the flush cam back on, don't I? Uh, there we go. Uh, so now I'm here. Hello. So, hope you're ready to play some Plinko. And uh, let's stop that bonus right there. Last chance to join the lobby. Uh, I don't think you can join midway through on this one. Um, yeah, Plinko away. A reminder that you need to whisper to Persephone's Twitch bot, and you need full answers.
time. Pog! Nice! Yeah, that is a pain to type. I had to type all the different variations of it earlier on. <coughs> so yes, any of the spellings would have been accepted. So we're up in the stakes in the Plinko drop zone. I think we are. Or is that the same? No, maybe it's the same. It's question four it gets up. Hog. Now this is the time, those of you on zero, you don't want it to go into a multiplier. I would buy those biscuits, Ian. I'm afraid so, Ali Law. Uh, you can type, try typing exclamation mark play, but I don't think you can get in after the fact. Uh, Ian, all the games that you see here on Game Night are built in Unity Engine. And all use the Twitch Lib plugin to allow the chat to talk to the game. Lively one. Times two. Nice. Thank you. 
Yes, Jack, that is 100% the right answer. Yep, it's really called a force. Wow, I thought more people would get that. Yeah, in this day and age, that question hasn't necessarily aged particularly well. Ah, uh, no, it's called a force, Lewis. Forcing is the action, but the technique is called a force. I probably should have included force in there, but you only lost 10 points. I'll show you one in a minute on the on the camera. Plus 10 there. I'll turn the camera back on. What was the pro profession of James Herriot? Yeah, three of clubs. Always three of clubs, Mark, with Pan and Teller. Oh yeah, your picture goes on when you've answered, by the way. He was a vet, so he was. Maybe I need to turn this into a full game experience. I feel this could be quite fun to do. Vet or veterinary, or veterinary surgeon. Here we go! it go in? Oh, 50 points. Uh, that area should have been accepted free ruckus. Sorry if that's not gone through. I'll add 50 pennies on for you. But yeah, um, veterinarian was a, a valid answer there. Question nine. What is the nationality of the fictional detective Hercule Poirot? Yeah, sorry if you put French, he's Belgian. Burmese. I can say he is not Burmese. Here we go then. I remember those points equal pennies at the end. The big old times five in the middle there. I can't even thought we got rid of the times five. Oh, it's plus ten. Oh, what a what a pain. No whammies there. So, just one more question for you. Remember, points equal pennies in this game. Double or quits. Do you want to risk it all? Try and double up. We didn't have a happy ending on Saturday. So the odds of you getting a happy ending today are still 50-50. <laughs> Screw it, says Yellowtail. <clears throat> Everyone's avatar dropping down individual results. Could be fun, might be a bit long. Unless I did them all individually. Here we go. <laughs> That's when the fun stops. <laughs> oh, it's a happy ending! Yes, doubling up! Multiple pogs. Siri again, welcome to the stream. And doubling up. For those of you who chose to gamble, turn on the double one, you have zero points. Second roll playing go, only answer one question right. Look at all those pennies going out, and those will be added on. In fact, they have been added on. Um, if I do a very fast start and stop bone, that should update the thing. So you can check your pennies now, see how many you've got. Who got the most there? Prue's 196. High scoring Plinko game. But yes, they've all been added onto your total. What fun. Anyway, I enjoyed that. So I'm just going to head to be right back. I'm going to get the uh, Danger Zone pack of the Lupines that we're going to be playing now. And I'll be back in just a minute.
Oh, it turns out I had decompiled the pack already, I just hadn't loaded the game, so that's good. So we can stop this song that's only just started, and we can load it into the question compiler. Lupine, 1st of February. Live questions, test mode is off. False original order is off for this one, so this one will be in a random order. And if you're ready, let's take a trip down to the danger zone. E just phasing through the R there in the opening titles. Physics gonna physic, I guess. Welcome to Danger Zone 2, one of my earliest originals here in its second iteration. Uh, yes, two. Two indeed, Colo. Uh, so, if you'll want to play, uh, just casually clipping through, just casually clipping through, we're grateful to the Lupine one for providing us with this Danger Zone pack tonight. Um, it was actually originally supposed to air this Saturday just gone. Um, I did the schedule before I realised I was going to do a charity stream, so then it sort of got um, passed by the wayside. But then I managed to rejig the schedule so that it would go in quite nicely this evening. And that is exactly what we're going to do. So if you would like to play Danger Zone, all you need to do is type in the code. RGY. That looks like it's Ryanair. Type in the code Ryanair. <laughs> You'll see your name populate over there on the left-hand side, once you are in the game. And a message from our sponsor, Jack Wilfred. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Mm -hmm. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. <laughs> Royal 10 washing machine. Royal 10 Watson Shake. Thank you very much for the 100 bits there, Jack Wilfred. Uh, very grateful to you. And Gamer Coach, thank you very much for that gifted sub to Eons of Ian. Ian, welcome into our little family. Enjoy ad free viewing for the next month. Um, Les Cat, welcome. Another new chapter. Les Cat, welcome to the game. And David, David DVD Smith. Great to have you with us, both of you. Uh, hope you're keeping well. Uh, so this is Danger Zone 2. It's a trivia game of five rounds. There are five questions in each round. Um, actually, this is a game where you don't have to whisper. You don't have to whisper in this game, although I always encourage you to do so, but you can type your answers into public chat for this one. It's another multiple choice one, uh, a bit like Red Herrings. Five rounds of five questions. At the end of each round, the players who are in the danger zone, that's the players below that red line, will be eliminated and go over to the boneyard on the right-hand side, where you can continue playing. You do get five pennies for every correct answer that you give in this. Is it five or is it ten? It's five. It should probably be ten, actually. Uh, you do get five pennies for every correct answer that you give in this game. Can I bump it up to ten? Yeah, screw it. Why not? Ten pennies for every question that you get right in this game, up to a maximum of 250. Um, uh, but yes, as Cody was saying, do still keep your eye on public chat because when the questions in the public chat, the question is live. Uh, along the way, there are two lifelines to help you out. You can use a multiply. You can use this on one round and one round only. You can't use it once you've been eliminated. Oh, sorry, Oni, I'll put it back. <laughs> back to five. No, I'm going to put it at ten. I feel like ten is more comparable with things like Cryptex, which is... Um, uh, like 300. No, maybe five. Okay, I'm gonna put it back to five uh, for now just because I need to actually look at the data. Uh, have I implemented one to four? Good question. Uh, if did, did... 10? Should it be 10? Okay, fine, it should be 10. Oh, hello. A uh, message from our sponsor, Eons of Ian. Do you have trouble eating your toasted sandwiches <laughs> properly? Don't fret, my friend. Just use Quick Chill and in seconds your meal will be cooled to a brisk ice cube. Use promo code R-O-Y-A-L-F-L-U-S-H for 10% off your next order. That's R-O-Y-A-L- And the TTS has given up. Thank you very much for the 200 bits there, Ian Zavian. Um, and apparently our sponsor was Quick Chill, not, um, not uh, Ian Zavian. Uh, I'm going to check actually to see if I 
did add the one to four thing. You know what? I don't think I did because this uses an older base code that actually doesn't use Twitchlib. Um, it uses something entirely different. I need to make I need to make Danger Zone three. Um, yeah, there's things that need tweaking with this game. So normally when that happens, if there's a big tweak that needs to be made, I just I just remake the game. Three, yes, Danger Zone three. Oh, one, two, three, four does work. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, stay out of the danger zone. It's the long and short of it. Uh, multiplier will double the points you get for each quest uh, for each question. And player two start. Welcome to the stream. Um, the nerf will get rid of the question, and it will give you ex the points equal to exactly half the players. So if we have thirty players in the lobby, which I'm kind of hoping we get to, because that's the ideal number to play danger zone with, um, then you will get fifteen uh, rounded down. If it is um, if it is a uh, odd number. Um, you get points by answering fast, so if there are 30 players in the lobby and you answer first and correctly, you get 30 points. The next gets 29, the next gets 28, the next gets 27, and so on. Obviously, no points if you're wrong in a message from our sponsor, Welcome Salem Stowaway. Hype Train Zone 2. Hype Train Zone 2, indeed. Thank you very much for the 100 bits there, Salem. Uh, so yeah, the faster you answer, basically, the more points you get. Number of players that are in the lobby are... Message from our sponsor, Kegel Coach. <laughs> I'm never watching Fight Club thanks to this stream. <laughs> Kidding. Thanks for the trivia and the laughs and the UK knowledge. Always a pleasure, Kegel Coach. Thank you very much for the 100 bits. I do give Fight Club a go. Fight Club's a good film. I know it didn't have a happy ending a couple of weeks ago. Uh, let's get one more. Let's get up to 30 in this lobby. That'd be fantastic. Um, so yes, use your lifelines before they, you go into the Boneyard, because when you're in the Boneyard, you can't use them. Likewise, you can't use them in the final. But yeah, double points for the multiply, and you have to decide that at the start of the round. All of the rounds will be on a uh, question within one category, and you can use Nerf on one question, which can be a good way to get you out of trouble if you don't know the answer to a question. Westinator, welcome to the stream, and thank you for making a nice round 30. Um, don't know what that says. To be fair, I seem to always watch Fight Club when I'm drunk. Um, or I certainly did when I was a student. And no, no, I'm not always drunk before anyone jumps on that bandwagon. It's because I've always got a glass of wine on the go. I've been well, Westinator. I'm well recovered from Saturday. Saturday was a long stream, uh, but it was uh, it was a good stream. And uh, we raised some, some good money for a great cause. So uh, thank you for joining us and thank you for your kind words. Uh, welcome on in. Right, we've got 30 players, which is a nice number to play Danger Zone with. Let's lock you in and our game will begin. Ah, thank you very much, Westgate. You're very kind. So, welcome to Danger Zone. The lobby's been locked and 30 players have entered the arena. The standard Danger Zone size is 6 and the game will begin shortly. So, it's 3 exclamation marks into the chat, or M, to use a multiplier, and you can only choose to use that when the category is displayed. As ever, keep your eyes on the chat, because the chat has all the information and when the questions are in there, the questions are live. Uh, Beyond that, if you want to nerf a question, if you see a question that you don't like the look of, or you think you've been a bit slow to answer it, and you want to uh, maybe boost your points from what you would get if you think lots of people have got it right, it's N to nerf. It doesn't count towards your allotment of correct answers, but it does give you some points. So, uh, what did I set the um, pennies to in the end? I did set them to then. So, 10 pennies for every question that you get right, uh, and this applies whether you're in the main game or in the boneyard, so do keep answering even if you get eliminated. Without any further ado, and once again, thanks to Lupine for this question back, and thanks to... Uh, uh, Lewis for proofing it. Uh, Lewis proofing this pack right here. I forgot for a moment. I couldn't remember if it's Lewis or Rony. Uh, but Lewis proofing this pack, uh, to whom we're very grateful, and thank you to Lupine for writing as well. So, without any further ado, if you want to play a multiplier, three exclamation marks or an M, either to the bot or into public chat. <coughs> Hello, Tarn Wallbanks. Thank you very much for the follow. You've just missed the lobby for this game, but do watch along from the wings, and welcome to the stream. The first category is... Take on me. 15 seconds to use your multiplier if you want to use it. Remember, you only get one for the whole game. So once it's gone, it's gone. Colo, David, uh, Pyro, Salem, player two. All activated multipliers on this opening round. So you five will get double points for this round. 30 players in the game, which means the first to answer correctly will get 30 points. The next will get 29, the next will get 28, and so on. And a message from our sponsor, Oni. Na 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 That wasn't bad TTS to be honest uh. Can't get away I don't know what 
I'm to say I say it anyway. No, it's Take On Me. I don't know if all the questions are going to be about that particular band, uh, which I'm not going to say just in case that is one of the questions. Like I say, I haven't proofread this pack. Um, but let's see what happens. Answering either... <laughs> any play playing the piano text. Answering either to Persephone's Switch Bot. Anyway, yeah, here's Wonderwall. No, Take On Me. I'll play it properly there. 2058 on the Switch. I think I might have played the piano earlier, possibly, during Red Herrings. Anyway, good luck to you all. Round one is Take On Me. Let's play Danger Zone. Multiple choice, A through D, or one through four will also work. Here we go, question one. In which year did Microsoft launch Windows ME? 2001, 1999, 1998, or 2000? Have a locking in an answer. Uh, not everyone correct, but a decent amount. Who was fastest there? Uh, Ines getting in first. David was second. Jack was third. Mark was fourth. And Salem was fifth. Kegler and Colo using an early nerf there. Getting themselves a flat rate of 15 points. Can confirm numerical input works. Excellent. Good to hear. So one to four also works as well as A to D. But you still need N if you want to nerf. A couple of nerfs being played there. So you get a flat rate of 15 points. The correct answer was D, 2000. Have I got any trivia about that? No. In fact, all of this is just citations apart from one question uh, which is in that round so uh, big danger zone because the danger zone is dynamic and will accommodate everyone who is on a tied score uh, but we can only lose uh, six players six twelve eight. yeah six we can only lose six players around so if we need to we'll go to a tiebreaker but for now let's go on to question number two Who was the host of ITV dating show Take Me Out? Was it Johnny Vegas, Chris Moyles, Dion Dublin, or Paddy McGuinness? Answers from everybody. <clears throat> Ten pennies if you got that right, just like that. Who was fastest? Uh, Oni that time fastest, followed by Topper. BC was third, Toot was fourth, and Natter was fifth. Very well played. Another nerf being played there by Free Ruckus, so you've got a flat rate of 15 points. Uh, the correct answer there was D, Paddy McGuinness. And we have got our standard Danger Zone size, Kegler Coach, AB, me, Jers, Planet, Yellowtail, and Bitter Rotter. You're in the Danger Zone at the moment, but still three questions to go. Let's go on to question number three. No likey, no lighty. Indeed. Question three, then. Which tennis player became an investor in Swiss footwear brand on ON in 2019, or ON, possibly, and began wearing their shoes on the court in 2020? Was it Roger Federer, Daniel Medvedev, Rafael Nadal, or Novak Djokovic? Oh, wow, the majority getting that right. Uh, who was fastest? Uh, BC was first there. Salem getting it second. Brand New Haley was third. Jack was fourth. Innis was fifth. A couple of nerfs being played there. Ian and Planet 5 for one playing their nerfs. Going to get them some free points. I imagine since it's Swiss, it's probably Roger Federer. Is that the right answer? Yes, it is, Roger Federer. Ooh, look at this. Only in the danger zone on 30, along with Lescat on 28. Jers, 23. Yellowtail, 22. Planet on 15. Bitterot is still yet to score. Uh, two questions in order to get out of the danger zone, or you will be eliminated. David currently leading with 146. Salem's in second with 110. Jack in third with 77. On we go. Question number four. Question four, then. In professional wrestling, the Undertaker's streak of 21 WrestleMania victories came to an end in 2014 when he lost against which WWE superstar? Was it Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, Triple H, or John Cena? De -de -de -de. Hang on, I need a trumpet patch though, don't I? There we go. That's the John Cena sound effect. Uh, wow, not very many getting this. Who was fastest? Aaron getting there first. Oni was second. Ruckus third. Natter in fourth. Mark in fifth. No nurse being played on that question. Uh, tricky qu Oh, yeah, it is. It's a... Sorry. I've got to stop doing that. Yeah, it's a four by Arthur. You know, for Baker Street, you need the uh, saxophone, which is uh, uh, that one. Mm -hmm. 
Something like that. Anyway, stop distracting me with saying things. Uh, say, saying songs and then you play them on the piano. Uh, no, no, we're not going to Crystal Maze. Maybe later. Correct answer was B, Brock Lesnar. We've got a tie in the danger zone. Ian and AB me both on 31. Let's get on 28. Jers 23. Yellowtail 22. Planet on 15. Bitterrotter on 0. But Jogging Chum and Kegler are only one point ahead of Ian. And that is where the separation of the danger zone line is. So Shapes, Jogging Chum, Kegler. Maybe you've got to look over your shoulder. It could still go anyway. There are still 30 points available. Bitterrotter can't amass enough points to escape the danger zone at this point. But it is still wide open for anybody else. Davis still leading the pack. Pirate pick me now in second. Sailor moves to third. Last question of the round. Take a look at this. <laughs> Maybe Salem. The lead vocalist of which band featured on Taylor Swift's 2019 single, Me? Was it Fall Out Boy, Green Day, Panic at the Disco, or My Chemical Romance? I know all of those. <laughs> I know the lead singers of all of them. So Fall Out Boy is Patrick Stump, Panic at the Disco is Brendan Uri, My Chemical Romance is Gerard Way, Green Day is... Oh, I can't remember Green Day's... Who's the lead singer of Green Day? I'm going to kick myself when I... And someone tells me. Yeah, lead vocalist. Yeah, it is just Brandon Urie, isn't it? Oh, Bre Brendan Urie, not Brandon. I'm thinking of Brandon Flowers. Uh, Billy Joe Armstrong, that's the one. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone in chat. Uh, for placating me. Who was fastest there? Uh, Aaron getting there first. Good round for Aaron. Topper picking up second. Uh, Toot in third. Salem fourth. And Oni was fifth. Good answering there. ABB and Yellowtail using that Hail Mary nerf for the free 15 points. Is it going to be enough to get them out of the danger zone? I'm not sure. There's a lot of people ahead of them getting it right. P the person above the danger zone line, the lowest person above the danger zone line to get it wrong was BC. I think BC might be far enough ahead, so it may be all but done. But, who knows? Bitter Rotter, uh, did, did I have the multiplier? No, no one in the danger zone had the multiplier on. So let's find out. The correct answer was C, Panic at the Disco. Brendan Uri was the answer. <coughs> BC does drop, but not into the danger zone. And we have got just six players there. At the end of that round, David finishes on 176, Sailor in second on 164, and Aaron in third on 127. Very well done. You will get some bonus points going into the next round. Uh, they'll be worked out roughly based on a third or a, is it, is it a half, a third, and a quarter of the number of players remaining, very approximately. So something like 12, um, 8, and 6. I think will be your boost. And you'll be joined in round two by Pick Me, It's Solly, Jack, Player Two, Toot, Oni, Topper, Mark, Innis, Mork, Quizface, Brand New Halo, Ruckus, Kodo, Westinator, Natter, Shapes, BC, Kegler, Jogging Chum, and by a single point, Eons of Ian. Very well done, you're through to round two. However, unfortunately, AB Me, Yellowtail, Lescat, Jers, Bitter Otter, and Planet 511. It is the end of the round. You are in the danger zone, which means we have to say goodbye. And over you go to the Boneyard. Do keep answering over there because you get 10 times your score in pennies, which is our internal database and channel currency, which are used in the end of season finale in the draw. The more pennies you have, think of it as raffle tickets, the more likely you are to win a fabulous prize at the end of the season. So thank you for playing and um, do keep answering from over there though, all for extra pennies. Yes, you still play from the Boneyard. Right. Uh, well done to the 24 survivors. Let's go on to round number two. M or three exclamation marks into chat or to the bot if you want to play a multiplier. And the category is... The sun always shines on TV. Couple, three being played. Mork, Quizface, Kegler. All activating multipliers here. Ah, DVD Smith spotting a theme. Mork, Quizface, Kegler, and Ian all activated multipliers on this round. Okie dokie, so you'll get double points. 24 points is now the maximum, with 24 players left in the game, so 24 points if you're the first correct player to answer. The sun always shines on TV is the category. Let's see how you get on. Good luck. Let's play Danger Zone. Don't forget, your nerfs are still there, worth 12 points flat rate if you play them now. Question number one. One of America's first commercial TV networks, in which decade did Dumont Television Network cease broadcasting in the US? Was it the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, or the 70s? RNG doing a nice there, putting it in the right order. Thank you, RNG. Um, not everyone getting this one right, bit of a tricky start. Uh, BC was fastest, Brand New Halo was second, Topper third, Westinator fourth, and Toot was fifth. Sailor using a uh, nerf there, 
for a flat rate of uh, 12 points. Uh, let's see what the correct answer was. It was the 1950s. Look at this, exactly, no, not exactly half, just one over half of the players uh, are out of the danger zone and everyone else is in there. Shapes, Nafta, Kodo, Innis, Quizface, Mort, Mark, Jack, Pyro, Ruckus and Ian all currently in the danger zone. Let's just take a look at the wider scores after six questions. Um, Westinator, two, two, in fact, no, I beg your pardon, it's Sotley is leading the pack with six out of six so far. Not top of the tree because this game is about speed as well as accuracy, but it's Sotley yet to put a foot wrong. We have also got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players. Westinator, Salem, Toot, Liam, Player 2, David and Aaron, who are yet to go in the danger zone. But all of that could change. Sure, Let's go on to me, a message from our sponsor, Pollicles. Oh, no message, but we have got a three-month resubscription. Thank you very much, Pollicles. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I've jinxed it. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> my bad. I'll keep an eye on you. Hope you go green. Um, uh, thank you very much for the three-month subscription there, Pollicles. Let's go on to question number two. Shine was a UK number one single for which band in 2007? Take that blue Coldplay or Elbow. Oh, a lot more people getting this one, uh, including Liam. <laughs> Shapes was fastest there, Innis picking up second, David was third, Aaron fourth, Topper was fifth, Pyro choosing to nerf this one for the flat rate of 12 points. Uh, we'll see if that will get you out of the danger zone. Oh, come on, let it on and let it shine, let it shine. Yeah, sorry, I'll stop that. Correct answer was a take that. We have resolved the danger zone, just six players in there now. Player two, Mork, Pygmy, Colo, Ruckus and Mark all in the danger zone right now. Still plenty of people with a nerf left and people yet to play their multipliers. Mork has got his multiplier active in the danger zone, so that could make a big difference with just a single correct answer. Um, and Liam still leading the way with seven out of seven. Let's go to question number three. In which year did Gogglebox premiere on Channel 4 in the UK, 2015, 2013, 2017, or 2018. Thirteen? I didn't prove this back, so I don't know. I, I would have thought thirteen. I remember talking about it when I was teaching high school, which was 2013 to 2017. Um, who was fastest? BC was fastest there. Only second, Jack third, Pyro fourth, Mark fifth. Not a lot of others getting it right, it has to be said. In fact, only Jogging Chum, player two, and David both choosing to nerf that question and get rid of it for a flat rate of 12 points. The correct answer, I think 2013? Ah, oh, boom. Get in. Didn't know that. That would have been a good guess. 2013 was the right answer. Only in BC leading the charge with 61 points apiece. Jogging Chum is in second with 52. Kekla is currently third with 50, thanks to that multiplier. Quizface currently um, just avoiding the danger zone, but again with that multiplier right there. Um, down in the danger zone, two players with a multiplier, Ian and Mork, could be getting 48 points on either of the two next questions, potentially if they're fastest and correct. So still all to play for, especially with only a handful of points in between Mark in the danger zone and Innis outside of it. Let's go on to question number four. In 1997, who won the Best Actor Oscar for his appearance in the 1996 film Shine? Was it Ray Fiennes, Woody Harrelson, Jeffrey Rush, or Richard Dreyfuss? Wow, I thought more people would get that. Um, two was fastest, unsurprisingly, I suppose. Mark second, Ruckus third, Aaron fourth, Colo fifth. Three, uh, four, and uh, a few nerfs being played there. Halo, Jogging Chum, Innis, and Natta, all using nerfs on that one. Um, well, this could be interesting because we've got a lot of players just above the danger zone line getting that one wrong. Quizface shapes Western Eight to player two, and we've got three players in the danger zone getting it right and quite quickly. This could have a dramatic impact on the scores. Let's take a look. The correct answer was. And indeed, player two, Westinator, Shapes, and Quizface all dropping into the danger zone after that. The answer was C, Jeffrey Rush. I thought more people might know that. Is that the one with, um, is it, is it um, oh, do it on the piano. No, it's, it was, it's, um, is it Rack 3? Was 
it Rack 2? I can't, I can't remember actually, it's been ages since I've seen the show. Anyway, whichever one it was, it's got Rack Manon off in it, and I know there's Rimsky Korsakov there as well. Um, so... Kegler leading the pack. Let's um, put the uh, scores back on. 88, quite a big lead at the moment. Uh, Bill Bailey caught me this day, Flight the Bumblebee. Um, it was Vinsky Korsakov who composed Flight the Bumblebee, Jack Woodford. Um, I think we learned that in a previous game tonight. Um, Kevin with 88, Johnny Chum second with 64, only a BC tied up with 61. And big changes in the danger zone, but with one question to go, and these scores are tight. Tighter than an Italian tennis trouser button. Player two, Westinator, Quizface, Shapes, Ian and Mork, all in the danger zone. That was, oh, I see. Oh, yes, very good, Jack. Hmm. Uh, but 27, 26, 24, 24, with 24 points available per question, Few of them still would nerf, so can guarantee 12 points if they don't know. Liam, who I've been heralding as my champion, still on seven after nine, um, but is now just one point clear of the danger zone, as is Natter, Colo two clear, Salem three clear. So it's all changed from the last round, as is the... Uh, <laughs> you did warn me, to be fair. Uh, as is very often the way with this game. So, nerfs could be used tactically if you've got one. Nerf will guarantee you 12 points, which might be enough. Might not be. Because, uh, like I say, these are very, very tight scores. And bear in mind, there are three players in the danger zone with multipliers active. Could potentially be getting 48 points from this question. There is one question left this round. I wish you all the best of luck. Question number five. Have a look. Oh, very chill, too. Very chill. Can't you see me? Look, I'm chill. Question five. The Sun on Sunday launched in 2012 following the collapse of which other Rupert Murdoch owned Sunday newspaper? Was it The Independent on Sunday, The Sunday People, News of the World or The Observer? Not everyone getting an answer in there. Oh, Topper, did you do an RTFMQ? MFQ, whatever it is. Pain. Very much pain on that one. Who was fastest? Oh, the speedy one seemed to be at the top. Only first, two second. Shapes getting in third from down in the danger zone. BC fourth, brand new Halo fifth. Mork trying for the nerf. Is it gonna be enough? I don't know if it is. It's only 12 points. Uh, only Ian above you getting it wrong. And of course, if it's question five, you're in the danger zone, you get it wrong. That is going to spell the end of the game for you. Let's take a look. The correct answer was C, the news of the world. And my goodness, my gracious, my goodness. My goodness, we've got a tie. We haven't had a tie in the danger zone for a while. Let's look at that in a minute. Uh, there's a decent break between um, in the danger zone and not. Topper on 42 there, Colo and Westinator on 38. There will be a tie break between those two in just a moment. Finishing top with 88, Kegler Coach will get a little boost going into the next round. Only takes second with 85, BC and Toot. Tying up third with 82, Youth 4 will get a little boost going into the next round. And you'll be joined there in round three by Jogging Chum, Halo, David, Ruckus, Aaron, Jack, Innes, Quizface, Shapes, It's Sotley, Pyra Pygmy, Mark, and Topper. Very well done. We will see you in round three. Player two, Salem, Natta, Mork, and Eons of Ian. I'm afraid it is the end of the line for you guys. You will be going to the Boneyard, and you'll be taking with you either Colo or Westinator. However, we have got a tie, and we need to resolve that tie because we can only lose six of you. So let's have our tiebreak question. So our yellow players are eligible to answer this tiebreak. That's Colo, oh, excuse me, and Westinator. The answer to this question will be in the form of a number. Nerfs are inactive. You need to submit your number without punctuation, without spaces, and as a single string of numbers not in words. Whoever is closer to the correct answer will retain their score of 38. Whoever is further away will drop a point to 37 and be eliminated. That is how this works. Uh, in the form of a number. Is it not the same thing, Jers? Well, We'll have to find out. Just type digits is what you need. You need to type digits. Good luck to Colo and a Westinator. Here is your tiebreaker question. How many bathrooms are there in the White House? <laughs> Westinator's in. Colo need an answer. There's an answer from Colo. One huge one, says David. I was thinking <laughs> one. This is one, one massive one. <laughs> the French Biden out there with a the towel over his head, <laughs> in the morning with his toothbrush. <laughs> that would be quite funny. Um, well, 
<laughs> we won't find out exactly what you said. None. <laughs> but it's not, it's not like saying none. But no, they just hold it. They're so hard in the White Up, they just hold it until they go on like a foreign exchange that's or something. That's why they all stood like this. That's why, yeah, that's why they all stand oh, like that. It's oh quite right. God. Let's find out who was closest and the correct answer. The correct answer was... 35. And it was Colo who was closest out of the two, which means you attain your score of 38. And a Western Age, I'm afraid you drop a point of 37. <laughs> what are we laughing at now? We like shapes. The Rose Garden is remarkably fertile for a reason. <laughs> boom, boom. Pain. Or possibly Pain. even that one. Uh, Western Age, I'm afraid you have joined the ranks of the Danger Zone. As Colo, you live to fight another day. You will join us in round three. But for now, Western Age, player two, Salem, Natter, Mork, and Eons of Ian. It is the end of the round. You are in the Danger Zone, which means we have to say goodbye. And off you pop over to the Boneyard. Western Aid currently leading. Remember, there is a medal in the Boneyard for the best player in the Boneyard. So uh, bear that in mind. Uh, that can go on the leaderboard. And, of course, times you score by 10, and that's what we'll give you in pennies. Right, we have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 players. Would have been quick to count the Xs. With their multipliers still active, remember, you must use it before round 5. Otherwise, you cannot use it at all. You could have a chance of doing the Panda, maybe. But use it before round 5, or you will lose it. Likewise, the nerf. Kegler, Oni, BC and 2 are going to get some bonus points. And if you want to play your multiplier on this round, the category is... Hunting High and Low. Ruckus activating. Mark activating. Any more? So it will be next round will be the last opportunity. And with 13, I think it was, players... Still with unactivated multipliers, having a multiplier in round four could be a very, very big advantage. Right. <laughs> Aaron typing M. Good luck to you all. Round three is hunting high and low. Let's play Danger Zone. Pain. Question one. What is the name of the fictional spy organization in CBBC spy drama MI High? MI7, MI8, M10, sorry, MI0 or MI9? Is that MI10 or is that M10? MI0, M10, I don't know. One of them. Let's have a look. BC was fastest, brand new Hello was second, Topper was third, Jogging Chum was fourth, and Aaron was fifth. Only three other players to get that one right. The correct answer was MI9. MI9 is what we're after there. Oh, let's have a look at the wider scores. It's Sotley and David going into the danger zone for the first time. We have still got two players to avoid it completely. Aaron and Toot have not yet been in the danger zone. That will help them out if they can get to the final. Am I high? Am I nine? Oh, it does rhyme, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so two players yet to drop into the danger zone. Aaron currently leading the pack with nine out of 11 at this point as well. Um, and we've got quite a number of players. Uh, nine of you, half, exactly half in the danger zone. Let's go on to question number two. And he has two danger zone bonus, uh, bonus points keeping him out of the danger zone there. What is the name of the character Zac Efron plays in High School Musical? Is it Kelly, Corey, Troy, or Jake? <laughs> Perfect timing for that raid there, Quizzy Dan, with the Danger Zone sting. The raid noise is the Danger Zone sting, so that honk honk, yes! Many honks, but I honk back at you with my honk button. That sounds dodgy, doesn't it? <laughs> my honk button is honking back at you. All the new people, Quizzy, Dan, Meredith, um, a, a Fitzling plane, Foxy Rhino, Claire, Merlin, Tebow, Andrew, James Clark, Puzzle Cheater, and M. Clemson. Welcome to the stream. Thank you very much for that raid. Rubix as well, welcome on in. Thank you for that raid there, Dan. And uh, a honk back at you. Uh, yeah, perfect timing, almost to the second perfect timing with the end of the question for that Danger Zone sting. Uh, but welcome all raiders, hope you're keeping well. I hope you had a good puzzle boat tonight with the, uh, was it the Data Wizards joining you tonight? Oh, hello, a great big noise, Puzzle Cheater. Thank you very much for that follow. 
Well, come on in, have multiple honks. Uh, I've got to stop saying that because that just sounds no. Uh, anyway, thank you for the raid. Lovely to have you. I was about to go to the piano, that's why I was rocking the chair back. All in this together, one sees you. What we are, we're all stars, and we see that we're all in air. All in this together. Yeah, I like High School Musical. I grew up in the noughties. Oh, and look at this Lupine One gifting out a sub to Puzzle Cheetah. Puzzle Cheetah, enjoy our free view of the next month. Welcome to our little family here. And uh, Lupine, thank you very much for your generosity. Yeah, Meg's walking out as soon as Ben starts piano in such a mood. <laughs> yes, it is. It's... She gets a lot of it. Anyway, let's focus on this question. Thank you for that, Ray. Do enjoy the rest of this Danger Zone game. Uh, don't like house because you have taste, Aaron. Shaking my head at you. Who was fastest here? Two was fastest. BC was second. Some person who doesn't like High School Musical was third. Jack was fourth. And Shapes was fifth. Most players getting that one right. Uh, the correct answer was C. Troy. All of this to get. Sorry. Let's say this is in C minor today. Thank you for those themes in C minor. I only know that because I wrote it. Uh, so we have got six in the danger zone. In this quiz face, Liam, David, Pygmy and Kodo. Three questions to get out of it. BC currently leading with 39. Aaron's in second with 30. Topper's in third with 29. Let's go on. Question number three. Axel Lowe is a character in which fighting video game series? Is it Street Fighter, Tekken, Mortal Kombat or Guilty Gear? Not if I'm getting this one right. I see. I thought it was Streets of Rage. You got Axel, Blaze, and is it? It's not Carl, is it? Axel, Blaze, and someone else. But obviously not Axel Low. Um, Adam is the other one. Axel, Blaze, and Adam. Thank you very much. Um, who was fast as that? Oni getting it first. Innis was second. Toot third. Ruckus fourth. Jong Chum fifth. Couple of nurse being played here. Jack and it's certainly taken the flat rate of nine points on this question. Correct answer was. D, Guilty Gear. If you gave me Guilty Gear, then that's all good for you. Uh, still six players in the danger zone. It's now Halo Shapes, Quizface, David, Pyro, and Colo. Two more questions to go this round. Marconi and Free Ruckers at 1, 2, and 3. We're 48, 46, 44. All of that could change. Let's go to question number four. It's a fighting game, isn't it? Side scrolling beat him up. Question four Which of these posts had Jeremy Hunt not held during his political career? Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sports, Secretary of State for Health and Social Care, Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, Secretary of State for Education. I think I know this one. I'm pretty sure it's D because there was a thing with James Nocty on Radio 4 where he said, I'm going to be with Jeremy Cunt, a Hunt, the Culture Secretary, and then tried to cover up his C-bomb with a fake coughing fit. It was very, 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 very funny. Uh, so he was the Culture Secretary. Uh, he was definitely the Health Secretary because he was the most pariah politician in the world for a long time because of what he was doing to the NHS, or rather not doing. I, I feel he must have been foreign foreign secretary. I just don't remember him being education secretary because obviously I was in in teaching for the all the time he was in the in the cabinet, and I don't ever remember him being education secretary. Uh, let's take a look. Who was fastest here? BC was there first. Topper second. Innis third. Jack was fourth, and Shapes was fifth. No nurse being played. Only a smattering of people getting it right. Was it D? Yes, it was. Secretary of State for Education was the correct answer. Ooh, now look at this. With one question to go, Jogging Chum has gotten out of the danger zone. Uh, or has not gone into the danger zone. I can't remember if you were there before. Um, he forgot what nationality his wife was when he was from. That sounds like something he would do, Aaron. Though right now, I would welcome him with open arms. So say, did anyone watch the, watch the debate in Parliament yesterday and actually just suddenly start feeling, God, I wish to, I, I miss Theresa May. Never thought I'd say that. I mean, she was awful, but she wasn't, she was just a different league. She was like the conference league of awful. But Boris Johnson is sort of like above the premiership. Um, fo football, football joke. Um, BC currently leading with 57, Marks in second with 48, only a topper in third with 46. Six players in the danger zone, one more question to get out of it. Um, if you've still got a nerf available, it's worth nine points. Might be worth playing, might not, you'll have to think about it. Huh. Yeah, I miss him too.
golden brown texture like sun. Anyway, let's go on. Question number five. Conference League, well, yeah, I'm gonna use that again, I think, Jizz. Uh, sorry, BC, who said that. Anyway, question five. Approximately how deep in miles is Challenger Deep, the lowest point of the Mariana Trench? Is it 9, 11, 7, or 5 in miles? Uh, yes, Conference League of Awful, BC. It's a slightly slightly lower degree of awful than the, uh, you know, the, the, the winning the FIFA World Cup of awful. Uh, so, how approximately how deep in miles is Challenger Deep, the lowest point of the Mariana Trench? Is it 9, 11, 7, or 5? How deep is your trench? Is your trench? Well, that doesn't sound right. Who was fastest? Uh, focus on the right window and I'll be able to tell you. Uh, Pirate Pygmy was first. Mark was second. Topper was third. Jack was fourth. Quizface was fifth. Three nurse being played there, including Shapes. That will be enough to get you out of the danger zone there, Shapes. I have to say. Um, because John Chum and Sotley and Keg have all got that wrong. So you're certainly going to leapfrog over them. Um, and uh, Aaron also, and BC also using nerfs on that question for the flat rate of nine. Uh, with Pyra getting it right fastest, are they going to do enough to overtake and get out of the danger zone? There's three people in the danger zone getting it right and three people just above the line getting it wrong. Keglet, it's Otley and Jogging Chum. Is it all over? The correct answer was seven. Oh! For Kegler and it's Otley, they have hung on, but for Jogging Chum... They have gone into the danger zone and are going to trip out of the game here. No ties this time around. It's Sotley clinging on by his fingertips here on 31 points, but does survive to get through to round number four. Dang. I know, Jogging Chum. Let's have a look at the wider stats. Only a second appearance in the danger zone as well. That is rough, to say the least. Uh, Aaron and Toot now the only players to avoid the danger zone entirely this game. Also both leading with 11 out of 15 questions correct after three rounds. Uh, Mark, though, finishes around on top with 82 points. BC in second with 66. Top of one with 62. Very well done. You'll get a little boost going into round four. And you'll be joined there by Jack, Aaron, Two, Oni, Innis, Ruckus, Shapes, Kegler, and It's Sotley, but unfortunately for Jogging Chum, Quidditchface, Pyro, Halo, Colo, and David. Unfortunately, it is the end of the round. You are in the danger zone, which means we have to say goodbye. Jogging Chum now leading the Boneyard with nine. Everyone vying for that Boneyard medal. But 12 players remain. How do you go for hubris, Aaron? <laughs> Ow. How do you go for hubris? Well, the hubris question is, this is your last chance to use your multipliers and your nerf in this round. You can't use either of them in the final. And of course, your points in the final uh, start not with a boost, but they start with the total number of questions minus the number of danger zone appearances. So, bear in mind, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players are yet to activate their multipliers, which means you could have up to nine, which means those three who have, Kegler, Coach, Ruckers, and Mark, might be in a spot of bother here, uh, as they may be at a disadvantage. However, if you want to try and go to the final with that, using your multiplier, and then you go on to win the final, we call that doing the panda, as panda was the first player to attempt it, though I don't believe he ever managed to successfully do it, certainly in the early game. I think he might have done it since. And that is where you win Danger Zone without using your multiplier. It is an achievement that has been achieved by few, not many, and we haven't seen it for about a year. But could we be about to see it tonight if Aaron is about to go for hubris? We'll have to wait and see. If you want to use your multiplier in round four, the category is the living daylights. Uh, I was just looking through this and wondering if it has shuffled the pack. It happened by chance. It has picked the order of categories that was originally picked out, but it has shuffled the question order, so it is working. Living Daylights is around. Oh, no pandas this time on Takeshi's Danger Zone. Yes, all nine players who could have activated their multiplier, which means Ruckus, Kegler, and Mark, you're in for a rough ride here. But Mark, you do get that boost of six. BC, you've got four. Topper, you've got three a hair in my mouth. Nice. Right, no, nope, it's all there. Mm -mm. I might just come away from the camera just for a minute because there's a hair in my mouth and this is... I'll go around that way. There's a problem with having a beard. Am I still on camera? No, I don't think I am. Right. I think it's gone. No? 
It's, I don't know what it's clinging onto. Probably the wine. I'm probably imagining it. Right, round four is the living daylights. Six of you can go to the final. Six of you will join the boneyard. Good luck. Let's play Danger Zone. Question one. Which of these months would someone in Sydney, Australia expect to enjoy the most hours of sunlight in a day? March, June, December or September? Most of us getting this, not all of us by any stretch. BC was fastest. Liam was second, Mark was third, Shapes was fourth and Aaron was fifth. Just three ruckus and only dropping on this question. So it is going to come down to speed who's in the danger zone on this one. What with Australia being a southern hemisphere country, the correct answer will be C, December. Poconuts, welcome to the stream. Great to have you here, my dude. Hope you're keeping well. Lovely to see you. Uh, just in time to catch the denouement of this game. BC currently with a lead in 28. It's up, he's got second with 22. Shapes on 18. Mark currently safe without a multiplier on 16. Tied with Aaron also on 16. Jack also clear of the danger zone line on 14. Currently there in the danger zone. Topper in is two Kegler, Oni, and Ruckus. Um, and of those, it's Toot's first time there. Only Aaron is the player now. Only Aaron is Aaron is the only player to avoid the danger zone all game. Can he make it all the way through without going in the danger zone? We'll have to find out. Question number two, have a look at this. What's in Australia? We just don't know. Living Years was a 1998 album released by which group? Was it Pet Shop Boys, Wet Wet Wet, Mike and the Mechanics, or Simply Red? Very fast answers in the lobby game. In the hot seat game, rather. Not all of them are right, though. Who was fastest? Mark getting in there first. Shapes was second. It's Sotley was third. Aaron was fourth. Ruckus was fifth. Two players in the danger zone also getting it right, but BC, the leader, and Jack Wilfred, who was poised over the danger zone line, getting it wrong. Correct answer was C, Mike and the Mechanics. We've still got a split of six and six. It Sotley takes the lead with 42. Lead is somewhat academic as long as you're above the line in this game. Shapes now in second with 40. Aaron in third with 34. BC, 28. Mark hanging on above the danger zone line without the multiplier, also on 28. Two above now on 20. Jack, Topper, Innes, Kegler, Ruckus and Oni in the danger zone, four of whom have got nerfs, uh, multipliers rather, activated. You have still got nerfs left with a flat rate of six. It's not doubled if you're playing it with a multiplier. It is still six. Question number three, have a look at this. As of 2021, which of these US states does not observe daylight saving time? Hawaii, Alaska, Indiana, or Florida? Not many, but um, but maybe sorry, half getting it right here. Um, got a bit of trivia on this one. Let's see who was fastest first of all. Uh, Innis getting there first. Ruckus was second. Jack was third. Topper fourth. It's Sotley fifth. Toot using that nerf for a free six points. Uh, if you didn't know the answer, then that was probably a good play. But no one else getting it right there. Uh, just the six players. Correct answer was a Hawaii. Arizona also does not observe daylight saving time, with the exception of the Navajo Nation. Indiana started observing daylight savings in 2006. Um, I didn't think Hawaii did anyway. I'm sure I saw a CGP Grey video where he said Hawaii don't observe daylight savings, but maybe it's a new thing. Um, it's Ollie with the lead with 58. Shapes has got 40. Innes is in third with 36. In the danger zone now, it is all nerfs, sorry, all multipliers above the danger zone line. BC, Mark, Toot, Ruckers, Kegler and Oni all in the danger zone, three of whom have got multipliers but the six players above them in safety have also got multipliers active at the moment. Three points separate BC in the danger zone and Topper just out of it. With two questions to go, have a look at this, it's question number four. As of January 2022, what is the only chemical element to be named after somebody who is still living? Seaborgium, Livermorium, og Oganesson, Rowen Rowentgenium. Slow pronunciation there. Takes a while to pass. Seaborgium, Livermorium, Oganesson, Rowent Rowentgenium. 
It's a really tricky one to say. Um, only four players in the main game getting this one right. Aaron was fastest. Oni was second, right at the bottom, uh, but could make a big difference. Could be doing some leapfrogging here. I don't know how much there was the difference in the scores. Uh, yeah, it, it is very much a toughie, Quizzy Dan. Um, in his third, Shapes was fourth. Just the four players getting it right. The correct answer was C. Oganesson. Oganesson was the right answer. Only doing a jump. He's moved up in points, but not enough to get above the line. But he is now within distance of possibly being able to jump above the line. It depends what happens with the rest of the players. It is still neck and neck between Topper and BC. Topper just with the advantage on 31. BC behind. And Mark also on 28. BC with the advantage of that multiplier. 2, 26 and a multiplier. Only 22 and a multiplier. With only 12 points available on this question, Kegler cannot hope to get above the danger zone line, but for everybody else, it is still possible. Ruckus on 19 could get 31, tied up and force a tie with Topper if everyone in the danger zone above him gets it wrong, and Topper does as well. It's Otley in Shapes and Aaron, a three-way at the top. Nice, all on 58, and it's just behind on 56. This is too close to call. It is coming down to question five for the final. Here it is. Who played James Bond in the 1987 film The Living Daylights? Roger Moore, Pierce Brosnan, George Lazenby, Timothy Dalton. Five out of six players below the danger zone line answering before the players above. Mark without a multiplier, the last to answer. If everyone gets this one right, that is not going to be a happy ending. A lot of people did. A lot of people did. Let's look at what you've got. Who was fastest? BC. Got there first. Oni was second. Ruckus was third. Toot was fourth. Innis was fifth. It's Sotley and Mark also getting the right answer. And Topper using a nerf. With Jack, Aaron and Shapes getting it wrong, is Topper's nerf going to be enough? Salem, you say rip Topper, but you've got to remember Jack, Aaron and Shapes have all got it wrong. But, also but, BC and Oni getting it right fast and with the multipliers. Free Ruckus also getting it right in third, Toot in fourth, Mark as well, though without a multiplier. I don't want to call this. Although Aaron has, at the moment, managed to avoid the danger zone all game. If this is his first trip into the danger zone now, he is going to be sick. First danger zone and elimination on round four would be very, very upsetting. It's too close to call. The correct answer is... I think it's Dalton. It is indeed Timothy Dalton. <gasps> Look at this. We have got a tie. Aaron did manage to avoid the danger zone all game, but my God in heaven, 72, 72, 58, 58, then 52, 44, 44, and then a 34, 34 further down. What a photo finished for this round four. For the second time this game, we are going to a tiebreaker. It's Otley, Innis, Shapes, Aaron, and BC with 72, 72, 58, 58, 52. You will be in the final. Very many congratulations. Topper, Jack, Mark, Ruckus, and Kegler. Unfortunately, you've not done enough. Great game to get to round four of Danger Zone, but not enough to get through to the final this week. But it was all going to come down to between Toot and Oni. They have got a tiebreaker. They're both on 44 and both in the Danger Zone. Let's break this tie. Same rule as before, guys. This will be a numerical question you must answer in digits. Whoever is closest to the correct answer will um, retain their score of 44. Whoever is further away will drop to 43. For a place in the final, the very best of luck to you both. Here is your tiebreaker question. How many days a great British train robber, Ronnie Biggs, been on the run for when he returned to the UK in 2001? Need answers? Oni. Oni. You're out of time. You're out of time. The answer didn't come in. And I can't do anything about it at this stage. Pain. Pain indeed. Oh, that's not a way one wants to win a tiebreaker. 
Yeah. Now that's a rule lupine. If you don't get an answer in or if it eats it, you get int dot max, which is about 48 quadrillion, almost guaranteed to be further away from the answer than whatever your opponent said. Oh, if we had a hungry twitch there, that is rubbish. But big ouch, big pain, but pain. We do know, only went for 13,500. Two, and he said six quadrillion. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if Two wants to disclose what he said. Um, I, I can't physically do anything about it. I, 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 guess I don't think I can. I mean, if Two wants to disclose what he said, uh, I will see if I'm able to change the scores after the fact. Uh, I have got a player editor. So, Two, if you want to be honest and say what you actually said, I might be able to change things after the fact. Might. Right, two went for 7,000. I only went for 13,500. So, I might be able to change things after the fact. And two, thank you for your integrity with this. If only is closer, I will attempt to do the right thing. First of all, what is the correct answer? 13,068, and by anyone's reckoning, if we take only at face value, which I have no reason to dispute, his was the closer answer, and I don't want to blame a hungry Twitch on only getting an eliminated when he got the right answer. And so, Tooth, I am going to do the honourable thing, and thank you for doing the honourable thing and sharing your answer, but I am going to give Oni, if this works, uh, I'm going to give him his place in the final, if I can. Total score, let's call it 45. Multiplier used, multiplier nerf used, correct. Uh, what's your danger zone appearance is only seven. And total questions is 12. Right. I don't know if this is gonna work. I hope it doesn't break everything. It works. <laughs> I love it when my technology works. <laughs> Even if you did the maths right, you've gotten 12,000 and only would have been closer. Thank you both of you for your integrity here. Only I'm sorry it had to, it got swatted by the bot. Yeah, a thing worked. Nice when that happens. Um, I hope it doesn't eliminate the wrong player now, but um, that's very good sportsmanship there too for, um, for taking that. It does mean you are eliminated. And thing working tax, yes. <laughs> in property dev moment, love when they work, yeah. Well, it's gonna have to use it so seldom that it's it's like always very strange. And I think I remember, I'd say I've got a full player editor controller on this, so. Anyway, top of Jack, Mark, Free Rocks, and Kegler, it was all over anyway. Two, thank you for your integrity. You were further away on the tiebreaker thanks to Twitch's hungriness, and it gives only his place in the final. And it does mean that Toot, Topper, Jack, Mark, Free Rockers, Kegler coated, it's the end of the round. You are in the danger zone which means we have to say goodbye. Please work. Yes, it did. Maybe I don't need to make Danger Zone 3. Maybe this one works just fine. <laughs> right. It is time for the final. And only I did preserve your Danger Zone appearances and total questions. So they are as they were. And the final works slightly differently for our six finalists. It's Otley, Innis, Shapes, Aaron, BC and Oni. You will start with points equal to the total number of questions correct, minus the number of times you've appeared in the danger zone, which means it's Otley you'll start with 12, Innis you're going to start with 7, Shapes you're going to start with 4, Aaron you're going to start with 14, BC you are going to start with 8 and Oni you are going to start with 5. That is how this is going to work and, oh hang on, only I may have to... No, I didn't. I put your total number of questions. What am I about? Ignore me. Shut up, then. So, five questions in the final. And the questions in the final are all general knowledge. Maximum 30 points available. 10 points between first and last. It is still wide open. Toot has got the lead in the Boneyard and is looking for that Boneyard medal. Leading by two. Number of players on 12. Aaron with the advantage. The only player to avoid... <laughs> the third rule of Fight Club. Aaron, the only player to avoid the Boneyard all game. 
Oh, that's a charity stream. Oh, yeah, I should probably take that off. Um, if Aaron wins, it would be a perfect game, avoiding the danger zone all game. But we will have to wait and see. Uh, I'm just going to drop the Alan Rickman voice for a minute while I just glance at our friend's lobby, uh, sorry, medal cabinet. Aaron, best appearance in Danger Zone is a bronze medal. It's Sotley, and I know I said I'd stop doing this, but I love the tension. It's Sotley has never meddled in Danger Zone, neither lobby nor main game. BC has never meddled full stop. So in BC looking for their first ever game night medal tonight. Innis, two golds, four silvers, two bronze. Probably the favorite to win here. Can he make it three golds? Oni, two golds and one silver. Looking for a triumvirate of golds, a hat trick. Can it be done? We like shapes. Only two bronze medals in Danger Zone. Beyond that, not to medal in this game. Just the two bronzes for shapes. It is wide open for anybody to take, and I wish you all the very best of luck. Final round is general knowledge. Let's play Danger Zone. Which of these countries does not border the Central African Republic? Uganda, Chad, South Sudan, Cameroon. Oh, this could make things interesting. Innes and Omi, the only two players to get it right. Notably, two getting this one wrong, so that would have been very interesting in the main game. Innes was fastest, Omi was second. The correct answer was Uganda which does not border the Central African Republic. Aaron's still in the lead, but my goodness gracious me, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8, 4. Now the scores. Aaron's still avoiding the danger zone all game, because of course there is no danger zone in the final. But Aaron has the lead with 14 points, but there's not a lot in it. Let's go on to question number two. final letter of the NATO phonetic alphabet shares its name with the British war film released in which year? 74, 54, 94 or 64? Zulu? I thought 84 actually, so out of those I'll probably go with 74. Again, only two getting it right. BC was fastest, it certainly was second Christmas. These changes in the scores are going to be mad. What? Two getting a two getting a film question wrong? Who thought Zebra? <laughs> zebra? No, it's definitely Zulu two. Uh, correct answer was sixty four. It was as early as that. It's Sotley now takes the lead. Seventeen. Aaron and BC tying it up on fourteen. Innis is in third with thirteen. Only on ten. Shapes still on four. He thought Omega. No, the phonetic Omega is the last letter of the uh, the Greek alphabet, Aaron. <laughs> Three questions to go. 18 points available. Still anybody's game. Question three. The NFL's Los Angeles Rams relocated to which city in 1995, only to relocate back to LA in 2016? Was it Phoenix, San Diego, Indianapolis, or St. Louis? Toot and David both getting it right in the boneyard with two questions to go. There's a point between them. Five players getting it right in the lobby. Goodness, I, my heart cannot take this. Aaron was fastest this time. BC second, only third, in his fourth. It's certainly getting it right, but getting it right fifth. Shapes not getting the right answer. That might be the end of Shapes' run here. The correct answer was D. St. Louis. <gasps> my heart be still. Aaron has the lead with two questions to go. 20 points. It's Sotley and BC, both on 19. Innis on 16, only 14 shapes on four. With 12 points still available, only upwards can still win this, in theory. At this point, shapes can only hope for a tied third. Maximum of 16 points available, only hope for a tie third with Innes, which will also be a tied second with it's in BC on the current scores. Question number four, have a look.
Condoleezza Rice served as US Secretary of State under which president? Bill Clinton, Ronald Reagan, George W. Bush, Barack Obama. Oh, Aaron. Have you lost your leave? Have you given it to BC? Have you given it to Innis? Has only done enough to take over the lead. Pain. I'm sure this is Bush. I'm sure this is Bush. Only fastest, Innis second, Shapes third, BC fourth, it's Otley fifth, Aaron missing the mark. The correct answer was, was Bush C George W Bush. <gasps> But it's by no means over. Oh my god, I can't take it. 22, 21, 21, 20, 20. And shapes on a my god in heaven. Are we going to go to a final tiebreaker? Have I got enough tiebreaker questions left in the database? I have two. <laughs> Might be needed if we have... No, we, we can't have a three-way tie in the final because only one player will be closest. I'm going to look at what the final question is it's in a random order. It's going to be that one, isn't it? It is going to be that one. <gasps> 22, 21, 21, 20, 20. BC with the advantage by one point. It's Sotley and Innes a point behind. Aaron and Oni a point behind that. It is between the top five and it is coming all the way to question five. Likewise in the Boneyard, David can force a tie with Toot. If he gets it right and two gets it wrong. I wish you all the best of luck. Question five is. In which English county was Mary Queen of Scots executed in 1587? Northumberland, Northamptonshire, Lincolnshire, Lancashire. BC was the first to answer. Were they right? Was, I think only was second to answer. I might be wrong. Oh! Oh! Aaron, the only player to get it right in the main game, getting six points. Everyone else flatlining at zero, which means we're going to have multiple medals to give out. Toot securing his victory in the Boneyard, 17 over 15. The correct answer was B. Northamptonshire and that is the end of the game shapes a valiant effort in the final with eight points hello bash yes absolute seeds only getting the wild card into the final thanks to the integrity of our other players thank you very much again too for your sportsmanship with that finishes fourth shapes is actually fifth only finishes fourth so I'm coming back from seven danger zone appearances, 15 questions out of 25, finishing on 20 points. Innis and it's Sotley tied up on 21 points each, five and two danger zone appearances respectively, though it's Sotley getting, uh, also getting more questions and fewer danger zone appearances, but Innis playing out of his skin here in the final, both finishing on 21, will share a bronze medal. BC was the first to answer in the final, but it was the wrong answer. Three danger zone appearances, 14 out of 25 and 22 points in the final takes the silver medal. But with 26 points, 16 out of 25 and first we've seen in a long time, no danger zone appearances. It is the almost perfect game with 26. Your gold medalist tonight is Aaron Aromatics. What a game. So much for chill tonight. Aaron Aromatic taking his first Danger Zone gold medal. Only second medal in Danger Zone overall. Now you've got a gold and a bronze. Just need to put a silver with it. Very, very well played, Aaron. BC taking their first ever game night medal. Very well played there, BC. That will go in your medal cabinet, which can all be visited on the website, stephaniechair.com forward slash pennies or with a Y. Um, first medal for BC, very well played. And a silver medal in Danger Zone, that is no mean feat. Very well played 
It's Sotley taking his first Danger Zone medal as well. It's bronze. We'll add that to the many medals in your medal cabinet. And Innis adding it to the multitude you have there. It is your third bronze medal in Danger Zone. Um, so you've now got a two, a four, and a three. Honk for Aaron. There you go. That sounds like a raid message to me. Honk for Aaron. Um, yeah. <laughs> Puzzle Team's a good raid message. That'll be the raid message, I think. So uh, let me award those medals right now. Um, Aaron taking the gold. BC taking the silver. It's Sotley taking the bronze. And uh, Innis, I will add your bronze on in just a moment. Toot taking the boneyard. And Lupine, thank you so much for a delightful question pack. Harris going right down to the wire. First mass multiplayer win here. That wasn't caused by me breaking the game. Well, very well achieved there, Aaron. Um, right down to the wire. Lupine, thank you so much for a wonderful question pack there. Uh, let's award those medals to our players now. And let's give Innis his bronze medal as well, because I have to do that one after the fact. Uh, because I can only do one medal at a time. There you go. Whew. Aaron, do you want to see your name in light? There it is. 1st of February. Aaron Aromatics, 26 points, 16 out of 25. And you join the Hall of Champions as a Danger Zone champion. And yes, it was Panda. Panda has done the Panda, and he was the last one to do it almost exactly 13 months ago. We have not seen the Panda being done. That's what those emojis are in aid of. Those are players who have won Danger Zone without using their multiplier. Ape has done it twice. Clive has done it once. Panda has done it once. Everyone since the 2nd of January last year has won Danger Zone while playing their multiplier. Will we ever see another Panda? We'll have to wait and see until next time and a message from our sponsor Nata. might as well give some bits for not having my game done tonight but i'm all right with it that's good to hear thank you very much for the 250 bits very much appreciated and uh, we'll uh, we'll chat some more about that Nata in uh, in due course like i say i didn't really want to get into get into it on uh, on on stream so that is going to be the end of stream for tonight 11 o'clock three hours um uh, which is uh, which is quite nice um, good, good length of time. Um, so much for the chill. It has been quite chill, but um, a little bit of drama at the end never hurt anybody. Uh, of all the things that are going on this week, let's have a look. Well, we've got Bash tomorrow. Bash is back. Let me just pop into Bash's server a minute and see what his stream schedule is saying. He has got for the. Uh, I don't even know what the date is. What is the date? It's the first of February. I should have known that. It's relativity. If you're not following Ash the Bash yet, you definitely should because he does uh, a lot of uh, game show stuff as well. Yes, space! I need a GLaDOS button. Oh, that's the closest I've got to space at the moment. Um, <laughs> the game is not paid. The game is relativity. Uh, it's an original game. Uh, Ash does a lot of um, uh, remakes over on his, but he has got a few original games, including relativity. Yes, Spain. <laughs> that works. That works. Um, including relativity, which we'll be playing tomorrow on his channel from 8 p.m., do go and give him a follow if you're not doing so already. Uh, as for me, I'm going to be back on Thursday. We have got more heats from the arena. Heat 5 and 6. Looking forward to packs from... I do know this. Riff and It's Sotley are the packs up for grabs tomorrow. Riff and It's Sotley um, are being played uh, in the arena for the next two heats of the ongoing tournament. Do pop along if you would like to see that Thursday. That's from 7 p.m., slightly earlier time on Thursday, 7 p.m. Did I say something else? I meant Thursday. Thursday at 7 p.m., that's me. Uh, Bash is then back with us again on Friday with, oh, Secret Fortune. Love a bit of Secret Fortune. Great game to write for. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, it's, <laughs> we have a do the Aaron, <laughs> do the Aaron, which is uh, doing it without going in the danger zone. That could be a thing. Maybe I could make that a thing. I'll, someone note that in suggestions. I might make that a thing. Worship the toast direct. Uh, Ash doing Secret Fortune on Friday night. I, of course, am going to be back on Saturday with um, more headline games. Um, not that the arena is not a headline game, but it's part of a larger ongoing tournament, bigger than the sum of its parts. And that is going to be on Saturday, where we have got Number Wang, Cryptex, and The Abyss, and probably, not confirmed yet, probably Moneybox. 
because I had so much fun playing Moneybox with Matt and David on Saturday night. And I have got two packs, one from Zeus, I think, and one from Lupine, I think, uh, may bring Zeus's into the game. Uh, because I... Um, Yes, it's not your arena this Thursday, yours and Riff's arena this Thursday. So Saturday, because uh, that's Cryptex and um, the, uh, the Abyss is probably only about an hour and a half between them, if that. Um, Moneybox, it was great fun to play and I'm looking forward to doing it again. And because I've done the schedule for season six before I've made Moneybox, so there was sort of nowhere for it to go. Uh, so it's sort of sneak it in where we can. And uh, I have got a couple of packs. Um, so I think we'll play Moneybox on Saturday as well. Um, because that was so much fun. Um, I don't know whose pack. It's going to be Zeus or Lupines. Both have got a pack um, in the in the database. So I will pick one of those to use. Uh, wow. Go out on limb and say that Moneybox is the best game on here. Wow. Well, that is high praise. Thank you very much, Aaron. Um, maybe I need to do a poll. Maybe I need to do a World Cup fixtures sweepstake thing. What's the best game on the chat? I do need to do another survey. I asked... Um, reminded me the other day he needs to he said he needed to do a survey on his channel uh, i know i did two quite quote close to each other so maybe it's time to do another one um i'm quite curious as to what the what people think the best game is now because there's been quite a few more since the last survey was put out that is going to be the end of stream for this evening who are we going to raid oh we're going to I'll tell you who we're going to raid we're going to raid ruffle bricks now ruffle bricks is someone uh on the night before the charity stream when i should have been fixing games and do, preparing packs um i went on to uh, UKSG speedrunning, ESA marathon, and they were showing Ruffle Bricks doing a Worms speedrun. Now, I've never thought of speeding speedrunning Worms, but of all the games that I played as a kid, Worms is probably the one that's been the most influential on me. It's certainly the one I spent the most hours with as a kid. He's currently playing Worms World Party. He seemed like a really nice guy. I popped into his Discord server the other day. Um, so he's playing Worms World Party. We're going to go raid him, and we're going to say Honk, honk for Aaron is going to be the raid message. Um, honk for Aaron is going to be the raid message and we're going to go and say hi uh, and spread some of this nice love around to all of our new people who are here tonight thank you so much for joining us it's lovely to see you and if you've joined us from the charity stream thank you for coming back to all of our regulars who've been here for weeks and months and years uh, thank you for coming back as well lovely to have you here and I hope you've enjoyed the festivities this evening uh, I'm certainly feeling well recovered from Saturday which again thank you for all your efforts and uh, raising such a great amount there for Fetch a Dog I'm going to be back on Thursday I'll probably be floating in Bash's stream tomorrow for now let's go and raid into um, Ruffle Bricks and say honk for Aaron spread some of this love about and I will see you next time until then congratulations again to Aaron thank you again to Lupine I'll give you some end game pennies to finish the night off uh, for saying till the very end and listening to me waffle on end game 22 if you want that until next time I've been Royal Flush you've been watching game night take care peace out and good night I forgot to mention them go give topper a follow put his deets there also does game show stuff doing stuff on sunday night and the stuff on sunday night is going to be checklist and rebound new game new original game from topper go check that out and i'll give you a proper plug on thursday and saturday topper take care everyone i'll see you soon